And uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the last meeting, which was May 25, 1999. Is there any uh, corrections or omissions or other problems with the minutes that members have noticed? Second. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? I see none. The minutes are approved as written. Uh, next item on the agenda is old business, which uh, there is none as far as I know, so we'll go to new business. And the first item there is to request, uh, hear the request of Mark V. and Wendy W. Toothaker, Two Wheeler Road. Tax map U16, lot 01, to relocate an existing non conforming structure at 23 feet from Two Lights Road and 14 feet from Wheeler Road, neither one of which are consistent with the current setback requirements. Uh, is there someone here to represent the Toothakers? Please. Uh, I'd like to ask anybody that wants to talk tonight to use the microphone because we're both on television and being recorded for the minutes. So. If you would use the mic and introduce yourself, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, my name is Mark V. Toothaker, and I live at Two Wheeler Road, and we're the people who like to have our house moved. Um, as of now, uh, town's line, property line, runs through my bedroom, and I kind of like to pick this up and move it away from the, the property line. That, uh, as it is now. Is that the only reason for picking the house up and moving it? <laughs> uh, actually, it's on a real bad corner. It's going to get us off that corner, which is uh, as the first corner as you come on to Two Lights Road, staggering across the street from the Lions Club. Uh, there have been several accidents there. Um, you know, safety factor would uh, definitely be a plus on, on moving the home. It is an awkward location. How did you go about selecting the particular place on the lot where you put it? Um, a lot of things. Uh, basically, uh, the septic system uh, hookup. Uh, if we move the home, um, I'm only going to be moving the hookup about five feet, which is going to make it a, uh, a lot easier for, for us uh, to hook into the existing system. Uh, we, we kind of tried to center it in the backyard. Uh, as much as we could and run it parallel with Wheeler Road. Okay. Uh, it would be helpful, Mr. Toothaker, uh, just for the board. Uh, I looked at your site and I'm sure the other board members have seen it, but uh, just for the record, are you aware of the criteria the board is asked to use in the ordinance to evaluate your request? such as the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, et cetera. There are four or five of them. I yes. think the proposed order may be up. Does, does he have a copy of the proposed order, Bruce, that lists the criteria? I don't honestly know whether, whether um, I know we discussed that, but. Yeah, we did. I don't know if you actually got a copy, but. I don't believe I did. Well, let me just uh, get around it by asking you the size of the lot. We can see uh, the slope of the land where you're going to put the, the new location. I notice your lot does slope down and away from the road. Mm -hmm. Is that a serious slope, or does that have any problem with your construction activity? Or No, none whatsoever. Actually, we want to put the house right on the face of the hill so that the slope will, will basically disappear. Thank you. Um, and uh, another criteria is the location of structure, other structures on the property. I don't recall there being any. There are none that belong to and me. The telephone company has a, uh, a small building that's kind of off down the road a ways. And on adjacent properties, uh, your neighbor is some distance, as I recall. They are. Um, on the adjacent properties, I. I basically uh, went and measured with their permission off their foundations and uh, the only one that actually meets the, the uh, setbacks is the Lions Club. 
on the Wheeler Road side. I, I'm not sure of the, uh, the side to side and the Route 77 side. And as I understand it, the, from what you just said, the septic system will, con that's already there will continue to be used. Yes. Uh, and the size of the house isn't changing or the number of bedrooms and so no. uh, The other two criteria are the impact on views and uh, the type and amount of vegetation to be removed in the process of relocating. No. Uh, do board members have questions for Mr. Tuthick? Joe. You mentioned that the apparent property line goes through your bedroom. Mm -hmm. How was this discovered? Um, actually, when uh, they did the survey, Ost, I believe, did the survey for uh, the uh, bike path on Two Lights Road. Uh, we found out when we came up to one of the meetings and saw it on the wall. Uh, apparently, uh, all of our deeds, you know, uh, just gave us distances. They weren't exact, uh, you know, telling us that the town, the town line ran through the, the bedroom. How long have you been in the property? 15 years. Okay, so basically you've been there long before banks have started asking for mortgage surveys. So exactly. it wasn't apparent at that particular time. I asked, I asked the man that surveyed our land for us uh, uh, why we weren't told when we bought the property, and he said it wasn't done that way back then. Yeah, that's correct. And, and I, I believe uh, uh, banks would frown on, on uh, giving a loan to buy this property because of the, the way the property line is. I'm I, not sure. I, I think it, you're using the wrong verb. I think that they, would, uh, um, they wouldn't give a loan unless you corrected the problem. Right. So uh, it's apparent that it has to be corrected. To, uh, and I think that's, we don't have to worry about hardships in this case, do we? No. No, but it certainly would be a hardship if you weren't able to sell the property because of this condition. Are you going to have to do any blasting at all to correct this problem? Not that I know of, no. Really? Nope. Okay, good. None is planned. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, you, I noticed you had a partial foundation now, and I was just wondering if that was caused by ledge or, or whether they just decided not to do No, it's just additions. It's the way the house was built. Uh, the original uh, house was a center structure. Uh, then then the, uh, the addition on the right-hand side of the home was built, and then on the left-hand side. So they're just additions that were put on. Have you... Uh, asked any city official, uh, town officials if there might be some financing available to correct this problem? No, I haven't. <laughs> you might look into it. Thank you. Don't tell them I told you. No. <laughs> any other board members have questions? Thank you, Mr. Toothaker. Thank you. Uh, just in case the board member uh, happened not to find it on page 33 of the ordinance at the item number three at the bottom of the page, it discusses the uh, requirement for relocating a non-conforming structure and the final paragraph is, are the criteria that I was basing my questions to Mr. Uh, Toothaker on. So, um, anyone else who wishes to speak on, uh, for this application? Anyone who wishes to speak against it? Anyone who wishes to speak, period, on this issue. If none, we'll declare the hearing closed. And the item is on the board table for discussion. Or a motion if you want to go for that already. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, I would move that the board uh, approve the application to relocate an existing non-conforming structure uh, as requested in the application based on a finding that um, all the criteria in the zoning ordinance has been met. Second. It's a motion and a second. Uh, again, just to be clear, Bruce, uh, the draft that we had that outlines the criteria starts off saying the building relocation does not meet, and so I assume there should be a, a does alternative in there. <laughs> No, it, it, that's the correct wording in part of the book. Well, I want to be sure that there's a, a the motion is positive. I want to be sure the, the result is positive and not use language that may end up screwed up. Well, yeah, yeah it could be the one. Yeah, it okay. does, would be. So just 
draw your attention to that omission and when you write the uh, result, if this motion were to pass, substitute the word does, please. Um, is there discussion of the motion, which is uh, that the proposed request meets the criteria of Section 1943B3 and uh, that the matter should be approved for that reason? Mr. Fristas? Well, I'm just looking at the blanks on the one. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Do we, yeah. want to do we want to fill these in at this time? Uh, we can do that. I think uh, by the way he worded it, Mr. Uh, <laughs> was trying to uh, uh, cover that in one fell swoop by saying it meets all the criteria in the law. Okay. Uh, but as I understand it, the size of the lot is adequate for the move without encroaching on the neighbors. The slope of the land apparently is not a problem and therefore soil erosion is not a problem. Uh, there are no other structures on the property and the adjacent properties are some distance. The septic system will not be changed from the current situation. There are no views and the vegetation will not be affected except in a minimal way for the foundation. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, I have a motion, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Indicate the same and opposed. See none. It's approved. Thank you, Mr. Toothaker. You will eventually get something in the mail telling you the specific details. Thanks. Uh, the next item on the agenda is item number two to hear the appeal of Mary Page, 172 Two Lights Road. Tax map U15, lot 05 for a front property line, Beacon Lane, uh, variance of 24 feet from the required 30 feet, and a front property line on Two Lights Road, variance of 12 feet from the required 30 feet to construct additions to the existing single family dwelling. Is someone here to represent the pages? Yes, ma'am. Chairman, I'd yes. like to uh, make it known at this point that Mr. Robert Danielson here is an attorney representing one party in this case. And I have had a prior relationship with Mr. Danielson, but I don't believe it influences my judgment in this case. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. Does anybody else uh, have a similar problem? Yes, Mr. The same thing, Mr. Danielson has represented me in uh, several matters, but uh, I don't think it's going to affect my judgment on this. Okay. Anyone else? Apparently he gets around. Uh, <laughs> if not, and if no other board member has an objection to their description of the relationship and their decision, we will move ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, hi, my name is Mary Page. I am the uh, current owner of 172 Two Lights Road in Cape Elizabeth. Um, we're asking for a variance uh, to reestablish our garage where it's at and uh, add a living room and a bedroom on top of that. You want to tell the board a little bit more? Um, Pretend they haven't seen your application. Oh, I apologize. Um, what we have now is our garage is sitting seven feet from the roadway right now. We'd like to be able to move it back uh, to a nine feet, which would be a lot safer than what it is now. Um, it's on a blind curve, so getting in and out would be very dangerous. We also uh, have to put in a new septic and leach system, which is located under the existing garage. Um, so moving that would enable us to do that and meet with the setbacks of the leach field and septic field. Uh, if you're finished, I just want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. As I look at that property and I, I walk up that way and walk by it regularly and wondered why I was still standing, uh, the uh, question occurs, did you ever consider just rehabilitating the house in its current situation? We are going to be, with the existing house that's there now, we are going to be redoing that. It's going to be a total renovation on that. No, but I meant, did you ever reconsider doing just that, not having the additions um, that are part of this application? Uh, we wouldn't be able to because uh, of the garage would have to come down. We, we definitely need a garage. 
So that would be the main thing. And we do have a, a little larger family, so a two bedroom, uh, a third bedroom would be adequate and meet our needs, along with a, a living room with the existing. Are there uh, other board members that have questions for Mary Page? How large is that lot? Excuse me? How large is the lot? The lot dimension sizes are, let's see. It's the total is 13,115 square feet of the lot. And how much will you be enlarging the house? The, uh, with tearing down of the existing garage and the existing shed that was there, that came out to a total of 328 square feet. And we just want to make a, a 400 square foot. So we would actually be adding 78 square feet. And um, what I also have here is a uh, petition signed by the neighbors in the area. We have spoken with them, gone around, uh, shown them our plans, and um, they have all agreed that with the disarray that the house is in now, that a renovation of this type with a cleanup of the lot and of the property would be a major improvement to their area. And I did not have, submit that with our uh, application, but I do have that now. Do you, do you intend to present that petition to the board? Yes. Would you give it to Mr. Smith? Thank you. Any other board members who have questions about this application? I have a question. Go ahead. I get the sense from your application that there was a need for an updated septic and leach field. Is this just an option or is this something that you need? And if it is a need, why? What has caused that need? Okay, this is, this is definitely a need. The existing septic um, system is apparently located across Beacon Lane in a 30 by 30 lot. They don't know what's down there. It could be, they told me, um, 55 gallon drums could be down there. Um, the leach field is located under the garage and it hasn't been worked or redone in 40 years. 40 years? Uh, about 40, 40, yeah. There is a history of, of uh, failure of that septic when, when the prior owner was living there. Where is it on this? I don't know whether the septic system is located across Beacon Lane on that 30 by 30 this Beacon Lane here? lot or where it is. Um, I don't know that anybody really knows. That's, I think that's where the area was, where it was breaking out. Um, okay. Other questions? from board members? That's crazy. Did, um, I have a, I thought submitted in there was the, one of the septic plans, the leach field and the septic plan should be in your packet. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Thanks. We'll give you an indication of where it's at under the garage. Uh, another question. Go ahead. Uh, one of the things that we had before us today when we got here was a, a letter from uh, Attorney Danielson. Have you seen that letter? No, I have not. That came in today, so we'll get a copy here somewhere. I am a little concerned that we are getting a letter of this kind which provides testimony and hasn't been provided to the applicant in advance, I must say, Mr. Danison. Uh, are, are, you, are you done with your testimony, ma'am? Are there any other questions? Well, let me, we'll get to that in just a second. What I'm going to suggest is that we provide you with a copy of Mr. Danielson's letter if he <laughs> hasn't, and I'll give you a chance to read it and uh, as we're going to go on with the rest of the hearing, but, and then I'll give you an opportunity to come back if you want to make additional comments, which I wouldn't ordinarily do. Okay. But I think it's only fair. Could, could I ask a question? Go ahead, please, Mr. Cronin. Uh, the proposed garage, is there any better alternative to, re to locating it so close to uh, right away to Westlight there, yeah, which is not your property? That's Beacon Lane. Oh, that's Beacon Lane. To Beacon Lane? Yeah. From what I can see is that you're moving it very close to that line. And I'd like to know if you explored alternatives and why can't you split the difference on the garage between uh, Beacon Lane and Two Lights Road? 
because we're adding, uh, we would like to be able to add on a living room and a bedroom on top of that. So it would be directly connected to the existing property. And, and how is that a hardship? That because uh, we have to remove the garage regardless. It has to be yeah, taken I down. Um, but, I, I acknowledge that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But the, um, uh, the bedrooms, there are only two bedrooms, one bathroom in the house now. Um, we do have a growing family. We, that we would like to be able to accommodate our needs for that. So another bedroom and a bathroom would accommodate us for that, plus a, a living room um, for that. Uh, the garage um, is so close to the road now, it's a hazard yeah. uh, to turn around, to back out, anything like that, that is uh, totally dangerous right there in itself. Um, I guess my question is, in my own mind, is do you, have you positioned the garage to the maximum practical extent possible? And when you put, put it seven feet from, six feet from uh, Beacon Lane, and how many feet is that from uh, Two Lights Road? 18. 18 feet. Uh, I'm having a problem with that. Okay. We do have our, my builder is here, and he might be able to answer these questions better for you. Okay. Hey, Mr. Crone, my name is Zach Davis, and... I'm sorry, can you... <coughs> there, there you go. go. <laughs> my name is Zach Davis, and um, I did take in consideration the issue that you're raising with splitting the difference. The idea for us was to keep the structural um, and characteristics integrity of the house, and so to center your, the addition the way you're saying would cause it to be just that, and it would look like an addition. And we wanted to try to apply something uh, to this house that looked as though it was part of the environment, part of the neighborhood, and part of what was already there, as opposed to something that was juxtaposed and it would be pulled forward. With the proposed addition, the second floor is the exact same width of the existing structure, um, causing that whole front facade to just be even and keep clean lines. So it was purely a, dis um, a design uh, consideration that so we used. Are you saying that the hardship then is, is of an aesthetic nature? The hardship is that the lot is only 60 feet wide. We're going to right. um, be requiring a variance no matter what. No matter if we put a pencil in the center of the lot, we break the 30-foot setback requirement because at that location, it's only 30 feet wide. Mm -hmm. And the, right now, it's uh, seven feet, and the proposed addition's further away from the back property line. So we felt as though we could let the design outweigh since we were making it safer and, in fact, pushing it further from the property line than where it is now. But putting it closer to the... Okay, I see what you're saying. All right, thank you. And do you know, uh, I don't know whether you provided it or just because of the way it got copied in the, in the CEO's office, uh, the scale doesn't work anymore on the copy that I have. So can, can you tell me from your plan, how shall I word this? If you carried the length of the house uh, addition yes. <clears throat> out to the uh, Beacon Lane uh, yes. Lot line, yes. As you did from the deck here, yes. And that was six feet. What would it be it was from nine. the house itself? It was nine feet. Nine feet. Yes. Uh, Did I clarification? What's nine feet? Uh, if, if you uh, you see where it says the deck, and if you go up to six feet up between the the end of the end uh, end of the proposed deck to Beacon Lane okay. or right away, if you go over to your left. <clears throat> that's the edge of the actual uh, living space, you know, the living room and the bedroom she was referring to. And I wanted to know what the distance okay. from that corner was okay. if you... Uh, so that would lead to the question then, uh, not that it's a major improvement, but just more out of curiosity, is there any compelling need to have the deck go out that close to Beacon Lane? It's definitely up to negotiation. Uh, we're here to get information from you folks uh, as to how we should best handle that. And that deck could come this way. Mm. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have questions for Mr. Davis? No? Not for no? Mr. Davis, the applicant. Okay. I guess we're done. Uh, Ms. Page, if you would come back, we can go on with the questions. Go ahead. 
I'm looking at the date that you purchased this property, and it was recently. Yes. Um, I guess I'm kind of concerned that, to use the expression, the cat was put before the horse. You bought the property, and now you're coming before us to ask us to approve changes. Most people, most prudent people would probably put the house under contract and then come before us and ask us, can I do this? Um, by doing so, by taking the steps that you took, um, I guess it, it doesn't substantiate a hardship uh, situation here. You took a gamble, you bought the house, and uh, I guess you bought it as is, and you weren't concerned. What you're doing to me is basically... Uh, excuse me, sir. Well, I'm, Can you put in a firm or a question on that? Well, I don't know. Um, is there, you're, you're saying you need two bedrooms. I, I think I'm asking her to convince me that, that, that there is a hardship. If this is, if this is not approved tonight, What's going to happen? I see the windows are out of the building, and, and you've already made some subst substantial renovations. What will happen if, if this is not approved tonight? If it is not approved tonight, um, we'll go ahead and uh, recondition what we have now. Um, but as I see this, this is I'm new at, at this. This is not a business to me. This We are making this our primary residence. I did not realize anything like this, these variances, um, setbacks, anything like that. This was all new to us, and I had learned this as we had gone along. So um, that's all I can say is pleading on that, but uh, that I did not know. Um, Others, go ahead. For the um, code enforcement office, um, in interpretation of the uh, Enlargement of a non-conforming business, or a non -conf I mean, excuse me, a non-conforming structure in a non-conforming lot, can she exceed the height of the existing building? Under a variance, that isn't one of the criteria that's taken into consideration. Only, only if you if you go under enlargement of a non-conforming structure, as allowed on page 33 or 32 of the ordinance, that would be a different application which she could not fall through with because it would increase the height if, if she did go to the board for an enlargement of a non-conforming structure. Is she increasing the height of this, the garage? She is, but a variance is, under a variance, that's not a requirement. This goes back to what we had on a couple of, several months ago there with the big, same no. thing that we had. <coughs> Different, this is a variance. It has endorsement. nothing to do with, with enlargement of a non-conforming structure as allowed to go before the board on page 32 of the ordinance. Yeah. They're two separate applications. She should, could not go that route because she was increasing the height within the setback. Okay. That's why she had to go for a variance. Okay. Just wanted a clarification on that. Thank you. I want to ask another question. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Uh, the uh, main statute requires that uh, a dimensional variance, uh, uh, it is uh, not unreasonably detrimental effect to the market value of the abutting property. Uh, now, the people behind you, I understand, have a water view now, and their water view would be taken away if you built a two-story addition. Mm -hmm. And so I guess my question to you is, how do you respond to the requirement that your that the variance uh, cannot have a negative impact upon adjacent property values? Um, I do not feel that we haven't gone, exceeded the 35 feet limit for our height, um, which is, by my understanding, is as high as you're allowed to go. Um, I don't know whether they have a water view or not. I know we are at the highest point on that road. Um, I know that the house in question sits down in a valley. So I don't, I'm questioning whether they are water views. I don't know. 
I am um, <coughs> not asking for. I didn't know whether you regulated views or not. Yeah, well, if the value of the property, as I understand it, if the value of the property is a function of part of the water views, and if the granting of variance would impede their water views, then you have compromised, I think, the property of uh, the, the value of the adjacent property. And I'd like to know how you respond to that oh, consideration. May, I'm not understanding the question. I'm sorry. Um, I'm you saying the law I may says be we cannot give you a variance mm -hmm. if you compromise the value of adjacent property, of a, a butter okay. property. Okay, I understand. If you build up and you take away somebody's views, common sense might dictate that, yes, you are compromising the value of their property. And I think this might be the gist of an abutter's objection. And I'd like to know, can you respond to that? Okay, I apologize. I understand now. Um, if you look at the way our, this property sits now, if you have seen it, it has been this way for a long time. This property, the way it sits now, is decreasing their property value, as is. Um, I don't, like I said about water views, I don't know about that, um, but I think if anything, this would increase their value of the property in the area, not decline it at all. Let me put the question more specifically. By raising another structure which covers both width and height in front of the property across Beacon Lane, mm -hmm. in your opinion, is that affecting water views and or the value of their property? In my personal opinion, mm. no. Can you say more as to why? Um, just as I had said, the way their property sits, they're sitting down. I mean, down. We are at the highest point. So if there were to be winter views, I don't know how. I don't know how they could, they could do it. Is it your understanding that you would have winter views from your location? No. No. You do not think you do? No. I have been in the house in the winter time and have no views. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Page? If not, as I said, if you want to take a moment and read uh, Mr. Danielson's letter later on, I'll and, uh, give you an opportunity if you want it to come back and at least address any comments he's raised. Excuse me. I do have a question. Yep. You said you had uh, gotten signatures of people in the neighborhood? Yes. Is that something that we have a copy of? Bruce Gibbs. No, I just, uh, I had handed it to Mr. Smith. The, Excuse me, I'm The sorry. petition of the neighbors in the area that had signed it, I handed that paper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Can you just slide it along? The board members here. And oh. And I can overview this and then come back up again. I'll Let give it. you that opportunity. You may not want to do it, but uh, we're going to listen to some other people, and okay. then they'll give you that chance if you want to come back. Okay. Uh, are there other persons here to speak in favor of the application before us? Yes, sir. In the back of the room. Good evening. I'm Bruce Munger. I own uh, the property at 175 Two Lights Road, directly across from the property in question. You're going to have to help me with your last name. There's an echo that I can't. Munger. Munger. Okay. Yes, M-U-N-G-E-R. Great. Thanks. I'd like to speak in favor of it. I, I don't believe that uh, the additions in question would have any detrimental effect to the neighborhood. Um, from a real estate point of view, you're taking what would be a... Uh, uh, Go ahead very uh, undersized house for the area, and you're bringing it up to par with uh, the rest of the houses in the neighborhood. Um, from that point of view, I don't think anybody's looked at it. Uh, it's, it's really an inadequate house uh, otherwise. Um, and as far as the septic system is concerned, the one in question, um, being familiar with the prior owner and, and the problems that she did have with that, uh, a debt may be an option to use that septic system, uh, but I think it would be a, a, a real detriment to the neighborhood and the neighbors for using that. And without granting the variance, uh, you are basically forcing them to use that existing septic, septic system. Um, there would be no other option. I think that's uh, a, a consideration that needs to be taken into account. Uh, and as far as the driveway is concerned <clears throat> and the existing garage, um, I, if you're familiar with my property and the apron that I put on my driveway, it was solely for access in and out of my driveway. It's 40 feet wide wow. because cars do come up that blind corner very quickly. And in order to have sight distance, I had to 
to create a driveway that could accept that. That garage there with a car coming out of it would, would do nothing but create hazards. Uh, and as far as addressing the setback of 18 feet on that garage, I think that would be a necessity. Uh, Beacon Lane and, and where they're looking to place that garage in relative approximation to that, um, you're going to need that space to get to egress that driveway. Uh, if you split the distance, you're not going to have enough distance backing out of that driveway. Um, again, I, I feel that uh, being right across from that, there's, there's no question that it would only be an improvement. Okay. Just so the record's clear, the, the 18 mm -hmm. feet is from Two Lights Road to the deck uh, in, on that side of the house, and the garage is some distance beyond that. So Some distance? Yeah, I, I have to measure it, but it looks, 20, looks 20 minus 67. another 8 or 10 feet. So might yeah, be as much as uh, 28 feet. Uh, if the garage is 20 feet wide, you're looking at 7 feet from Beacon. That makes 27. You're only looking at, um, yeah, maybe 28. But as far as egress, I think... From Beacon, yes. I thought you were talking from, about... From uh, the rear of the garage is, what, seven feet? Six. Six feet from Beacon. Six, that's correct. From Beacon, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. We're, we're talking 20 about 20 feet, 27. So you're looking at, uh, yeah, 28 plus. Yeah, I understand. Can, can you substantiate the uh, claim that a two-story addition will not impair anybody's water view? I'm not quite sure the property in question... Um, as far as impairing water views, um, I couldn't see it. The new structure that's going up on Beacon Lane, if that's the one in question, I don't think that they will have water views. Uh, I don't believe it's that house. Uh, it's the Lakemans at 22 Beacon Lane that are represented by Mr. Daniels. Okay, I'm, I'm... Which I believe is the house directly across from... Yeah, it's, it's off one, on the corner Beacon. I'm sure of that, yeah. I, uh, I would be unaware if they have uh, water views. And again, I think that might be something uh, if you opt up for a fact-finding uh, issue, that might be something to examine, the physical nature In January, of that. yeah, maybe. <laughs> Thank again, you. I, I, I think questions? you could look, uh, look out the windows in question and, and probably get a good idea whether uh, they're going to have water views or not come winter. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Munger? Uh, yes, Bruce. I have a, no, I don't have a question to you. I have a comment to make. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Munger. Thank you. I'm a little um, concerned that, 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 that uh, 30, of 38 MRSA 4353 that are, are not, will not unreasonably or detrimentally affect the use of market value of inviting property, and maybe Mr. Danielson can address this. That statute does include both variances and practical difficulty criteria, which a town can adopt to replace a variance criteria of the four that we have in the book. And I'm wondering if, if, if this isn't one of the criteria for practical difficulty and not for variance, which we haven't passed. Uh, I've got to tell you the truth. I just soon wait for Mr. Danielson. I'm, first of all, I'm uh, it's a good question. It's an appropriate one, but let's wait till we get to his part of the second. Well, we kept coming back to that. No, I understand I what you're saying, and it's a legitimate question. I'd like to have a clarification. Yes, it's a good question. Don't forget it. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to speak in favor of this application? Yes, sir. My name is David Heward, H-E-W-A-R-D. I live at 10 Beacon Lane. And I walk my dog every morning by her house. When I first moved to Beacon Lane from South Portland, people said, boy, it must be nice to live on the Cape, you know, two lights. And I said, yeah, we have a lady there who's living in her car. I mean, the house was so small for one person, she lived in her car. That was very embarrassing. And, and if, you're, if someone's coming to Maine and you're going to say, hey, you know, one woman couldn't live in that house and you're not going to allow her to put a bedroom and a living room in, I, I find that very difficult to believe. But I, I think it's delightful they're taking this shack and, and it's going to improve everybody's value completely. I think it's delightful they're doing it. I'm very pleased. I know the neighbors did want to try to buy the house and tear it down. That may have been where some of the conflict comes. I, I don't know how it could affect the other views, ocean view, because as she said, that house is further back and lower down. So I think she's entirely correct. It's going to increase the value to have a house that looks conventional versus a little tiny shack there. Great. Thanks, Mr. Hewers. Any questions for Mr. Hewers? Can I ask one question about Joe, too? Uh, why don't you ask me? Okay, I'll ask you. 
I remember about a year ago, our neighbor, Mr. Hark, bought his property right near us, and he bought the property, and then after he owned the property, came and asked for a variance. So I was just kind of wondering why his question was to her, because this man, our neighbor, an attorney, did the same thing, and apparently he must be savvy about that. So it's interesting that he had a comment to her when, you know, this, and, and he was granted his variance too, and I think certainly correctly. Well, I think the point is, regardless of whether this has happened, it's not the first time this has happened, obviously, uh, the point is not to pick on the applicant, but rather to point out that it puts the board in a much more difficult situation when you're dealing with what amounts to a fait accompli, uh, and uh, that sort of adds to the problem because if, if the board then says no, then the applicant's already made the investment and their intentions aren't going to be fulfilled, presumably. And uh, while, the, while that's not a legal criteria, it nevertheless is a concern mm -hmm. for people that are okay. concerned about their neighbors. And uh, so I, I think it's just a prudent comment that if you've got a major thing you're going to do, you better get permission before you put any big money into it. And that's uh, the, the basis of that kind of concern on our part, not just Mr. Fristashi's. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comments. Anybody else wants to speak in favor? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I am Margarita Heward of uh, Ten Beacon Lane. Um, I'm David's wife. And I want to speak here uh, for Mary um, as a mother uh, with children and, uh, and also as somebody who loves Maine and Cape Elizabeth and that area. Uh, first of all, uh, the house uh, is maybe enough for one person to live in. It's a very old historical house, and um, I'm pleased to see that uh, she wants to restore it uh, because it's, it has value, historical value to the area. And I'm also pleased to see, uh, as a historian, that the additions she's making to it uh, are conforming to uh, the style and the history of the house and also to the style and the history of the area much more than a lot of the newer houses around. Um, and I think uh, we in Cape Elizabeth, especially with what has happened over the last few years here, we should encourage people who want to stay true um, to the style and you know, the whole ambiance of Maine, of Cape Elizabeth. And again, as a mother then, um, how can you have children growing up there when nowadays two or three children have to share a bedroom and you don't have to, really a living room. I think uh, these are conditions that uh, we should not um, expect people uh, to live with. Again, you might say, well, she shouldn't have bought the house then, but again, my argument before that it's worth preserving because it is an integral part of old, the old Two Lights area. And we just have to take that and bring it into the needs of, of the year 2000. Uh, so I hope um, you know, things will work out for that property because it's really sad to see what has happened there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a second. Is there any questions for this year? I guess not. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the application? Um, let me then uh, just read in for the record, uh, there's the petition that the applicant referred to. It's signed by uh, several people who have already spoken, as well as, I'm having trouble with the writing here, Francis Doyle, I believe it is, and Prudence Barry, uh, the Mungers and the Hewards. Uh, and it reads, we, the community of the Two Lights area, of Cape Elizabeth agree with the renovations and upgrades being done to the property at 172 Two Lights Road. The property has been in disrepair for a number of years, and the current owners, Mary and Ron Page, are planning to totally renovate the house and land and use it as their primary residence. The renovations include plans for a single-family home with a two-car garage and total cleanup and landscaping of the lot. We have seen the home plans and spoken with the Pages and agree that the variance should be granted. Uh, and then in addition, we had a letter from <coughs> Peter Barr, uh, of 20 Beacon Lane, 
I'm writing in regard to the June 22nd public hearing for Mary Page's variance request. I will be out of town on business that day, but request this letter represent my opinion and that of my wife regarding the variance. My wife and I own 20 Beacon Lane and are currently constructing a house on our lot. As our property extends southwesterly, we are directly across the road from Mary Page's property. Based on the request outlined in the memo you folks mailed and after discussions with your code officer, it's the opinion of my wife and myself that the request should be granted. We feel that making the extensive improvements she's proposing is definitely a win-win situation for the neighborhood. <coughs> we have no objection whatsoever to her request. Um, if there's no other uh, testimony or written material on behalf of the applicant, uh, then we'll listen to those who are opposed to the application. And Mr. Anderson, now is your chance. Uh, and I'd appreciate it if you'd start off uh, with an explanation as to why we got this on June 22nd and the applicant didn't see it, and then respond to Mr. Smith's question, if you would, and then we'll go from there. As to the first question, uh, for the record, my name is Bob Danielson. I'm an attorney in Portland, and I represent Faye and Dan Lakeman. As to your first question, Mr. Chairman, um, apparently Mrs. Page contacted my clients at uh, 8.15 p.m. on Sunday evening to show her the plans. Uh, they called me at 8.45 on Monday morning, and um, I got it out as fast as I could. But um, 24 hours is not a lot of time once you've looked at the plans, especially when they directly impact you, um, and I believe that's why you got the letter today. Okay, thank you. With, with respect to the second question, okay, um, if you look at the language in the statute, okay, and I'm referring to uh, 4 5, I'm sorry, 4 3, 4 3 5 3 C, okay, it says a municipality may adopt, uh, uh, let's see, a municipality may adopt ordinance that permits the board to grant variance from dimensional standards. I did not refer to it as a specific standard, however, it states very specifically, the granting of a variance from a dimensional side will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. I didn't say the town of Cape Elizabeth had adopted it, I said it was in the state statute, okay? And the state statute is obviously strong evidence for the granting or not granting of a variance. Uh, look to the, the impact on the neighborhood. Zoning is a police power. Okay, zoning ordinances are drafted for a specific reason. I just spent six meetings trying to draft the town farm zone, and I would be uh, very unappreciative if someone were to disregard that at a variance in the future. So variances must be taken very seriously. Okay, what you've got here is a situation where someone is totally, flagrantly ignoring the variance or the, the ordinance. The intent of the ordinance is that you have 30 foot setbacks. Okay. That's to satisfy space between neighbors and frontage requirements, et cetera. Here you've got someone requesting a six-foot variance, I mean a six-foot setback from one side and a 12-foot setback from the other side. I've got to live with 30-foot setbacks. You've got to live with 30-foot setbacks. She's got to live with 30-foot setbacks. The hardship criteria. She bought the house three months ago. Like everyone else, she's required to do her due diligence before she buys. That's what contracts are for. You have all kinds of title due diligence, inspections due diligence, and everything else. You can't expect someone to come in here and say, I just bought a piece of property. Gee, the septic doesn't work, and it's too small. Grant me this uh, variant so I can build a two-story addition with a bathroom and a two-car garage. She's got a freestanding uh, garage on the property that apparently sits where she wants to put her septic system. I'm sorry if she needs a new septic system. That's reality. She bought it, she should have had a soils test, or maybe there was a soils test to determine whether a septic system was necessary. If the freestanding garage has to come down, so be it. But you can't expect someone to put up a uh, four or 500 square foot addition that's gonna directly impact my, neighbor, my client's property uh, when they're expected to live by the same rules. I've asked them five times tonight, do you have water views? And they said, yes, we'll show you the windows. If any of the board would like to visit the property to look out the windows, and we'll do whatever it takes to show you that there is water views from there, putting up this addition would block those water views and detrimentally affect that property. Um, I think that the board needs to seriously consider the whole intent of the ordinance here. 
Uh, we can't just disregard it when someone has a situation that, gee, they want to put a lot of money into a piece of property and make a bigger house. Yes, there's a lot of positive aspects of that, but you're going to disregard the negative aspects if you grant the variance. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, stay right there, please. Uh, did that answer your question, Mr. Smith? I, On the legal question? Is that question found under the practical difficulty criteria? It's right here, Bruce. Is that one of the criteria? No, it's, it says a municipality may adopt ordinances that permit the board to grant the variance from dimensional standards. I show it to you as evidence. I'm, I'm not arguing. I, I just didn't, I've never seen I, that criteria for variance in the years I've been in the code office. That's why I question it. So. It's in there. And what I did was I went to the, the local criteria, and it says to define undue hardship. Undue hardship has four specific criteria. They're listed in the, in the, uh, the statute. They're defined in the statute. And I said, well, where, where else in the statute is there any evidence that I um, may rely on? And it says, hey, the legislature decided that we can deal with uh, dimensional setbacks in a broader way. I said, if they decided it, we ought to take it into account for evidence. On that matter, I, let me just ask whoever's got the answer. Did I, when you read it or quoted from it, did you not, did you use the word may, that a town may adopt in its ordinance? I didn't, I didn't refer to the, the local statute. I said the state statute requires that. Bruce, read that again, would you? If you can find the appropriate. Which one? C. Variance, variance from dimensional standards. The municipality may adopt That's an ordinance that permits the board to grant a variance from dimensional standards. Yeah. There are two sections in this state statute. Mm -hmm. One, undue hardship, which is, the, which is what this town goes by. There is an alternative that was just passed, which is part of what he's quoting, that we, we discussed at, a, at a, a planning board, joint planning board workshop two months ago, that we can use rather than the four hardship. And so I believe that because that isn't on the books, I don't know that we can mm -hmm. take much. Uh, that's why I asked the question about may adopt, because it's, a, it's an empowering uh, statute. I'm not saying it's wrong. And in fact, as Mr. Smith indicates, this board has asked the planning board in a, in a formal way at a meeting and drafted legislation, which we hope at some point will end up in front of the council to add such language to our local ordinance. At the moment, it doesn't exist. I, I understand it's not in the ordinance. I understand it's not one of the criteria. Okay. Look to my letter. I said, I just note that there is in the state statute this language and you should take it into account. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I'm not so much talking to you as I am to the world at large in the minutes, okay? Uh, seems to me I had another question, but I forgot it. Go ahead, Mr. Cronin. Uh, this question of water views seems to weigh heavily on, on the issue here. Uh, I didn't go to your client's house and, uh, and look at it and see his letter. Can you fill out what we're talking about here? What does your client's house look like, look out on? Dan, come on up. I'm Dan Lakeman. Yeah. What does your house look out on? Which, you, you, you're, the window you're looking out, that the view is going to be impaired. Like, it, it looks out on the house that Mary Page just bought. Could I see that? Sure. Is this your, your house? No, that, that. That's, yeah, that's from our house. That's the, that's the view, right? And this garage would be built over to the left here. And those trees to the uh, yeah. to the left of the house are the go down. They block. They go down along Two Lights Road to the left hand side. Okay. And and, and where you point out to me where the horizon is on there that that the water view you see in the winter. Right. And when these most of the oak trees are here yeah. clear. The right over top of where Two Lights. Lobster Shack is, yeah. and the bay out through there, the ocean out through there is where it is. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Uh, let's go back to Mr. Danielson. If, if you want to stand by, Mr. Lakeman, we'll give you sure. a chance in a minute. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. You have a question? I have a question for Mr. Danielson first. Okay, um, please. We'll get back to Mr. Uh, did, did I understand that your clients didn't contact you until they had heard from Mrs. Page, not when they got the public notice? Is that correct? Oh, they did contact me when they got the public notice, and we discussed it. And I spoke to Mr. Smith, and I spoke to my clients. But they called me Monday morning and said, we got to do something. They think we're in support of the petition, and we're really not. What should we do? Okay? I was planning to attend another hearing tonight. 
and then for Mr. Lakeman, um, how many windows in your house have this water view? Uh, one, two, three, four. The four different rooms? No. No, it's two room? different rooms. I'm sorry. What two different the, rooms. Two different rooms? Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to ask, is, is it the second story that interferes with That's the, correct. Okay. Uh, going back to you, Mr. Danielson, but certainly Mr. Lakeman could answer this since he's standing there if you prefer. Uh, you made some statements a few minutes ago to the effect that uh, uh, the issue about distance from the neighbors and uh, in, intrusion on the neighbors on the on the side lots. I guess, except for this alleged view, and I say alleged because we have contrary uh, testimony here. Uh, I don't understand where you believe that the proposal, as laid out, would intrude on the neighbors, given that Beacon Lane's in one direction and it's woods on either side, and Two Lights Road on the fourth side. This is a two-story addition, six feet from the from Beacon Lane. If you let this happen, what's the matter with somebody else coming in tomorrow and putting one three feet from Two Lights Road and then two feet from Shore Road? I don't understand the logic of the board if someone says that the, the requirements for the setback are 30 feet and someone says, gee, I bought a property two months ago and I think I'll make it six feet. The board would seriously take that into consideration. Well, I understand what you're saying, obviously, and I, uh, but what I'm trying to find out, I mean, that's why we have a variance requirement or provision in the ordinance for the board to consider all the, cons the factors. And one of the factors that you've raised that I'm trying to sort through is other than this sort of general threat to the future of the town, what specific impacts other than the alleged water view problem does this proposal have on the neighbors? Why is there a 30-foot setback at all? I don't get into an <laughs> I mean, cross-examination whether you just answer my question. If you can't, don't. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out who's impacted and how on each of the four sides, aside from the water view that's supposedly affected. The size and bulk will have an adverse impact on my client. That, that person will be living in that house six feet from the lane. And, and how why, far and from your client's house is that? How far are you set back from the other side? And how far, uh, first of all, you shouldn't be testifying, you're not on the record, but 40 feet, according to you, Mr. Lakeman, roughly, from Beacon Lane? Uh, yeah, okay. uh, roughly. I mean, I okay. have a major from second, in front of us. Okay. And how far is it to the house that's now being built uh, beside you? The house being built beside us from yeah. our house? Yeah. I don't know. They're well within the... the Setbacks. I'm just okay. I, I just drove through there and didn't pay attention to that. I'm just trying to get a relationship thing in my head here. But you would say it's more than 40 feet, you believe? Probably. What are the setbacks? Uh, 25 or something like that? 25 on each side. Yeah, yeah. so that's 50. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can stay there. We may have other questions for you. But uh, any other questions for Mr. Danielson? I have another question. Go ahead. Um, We've heard from several of the neighbors and the property owner that, uh, in fact, the improvements that are suggested will increase the property values of the neighborhood. Is, is, are we just in a he, should, he said, she said situation, or is there no, I think, disputed it, evidence here? I think that any time you pour this amount of money that uh, Mrs. Page is pouring into a piece of property, of course it's going to improve the neighborhood. But you've got to talk about each specific neighbor. My client's being affected adversely. If I were next door, I'd say, geez, got rid of the eyesore. I'm sure my client would like to get rid of the eyesore. But you've got you've to live within your own limitations. And if every other person, in fact, how many people signed the petition? Oh, what do I do with it? Here it is. Six. How many are married? How many husband and wives? No, how many families signed the there's petition? Three, there's four families I have, I have to answer your question. Four, four families who signed the petition. Okay. And plus the letter, though, I read another. How, how far you want to extend the neighborhood, okay? My <coughs> clients have a very specific situation that they thought serious enough to hire an attorney at considerable expense. I think that they think they're adversely affected. 
okay? And that addition is large in their mind and having a very adverse impact. I like my seasonal water views. I'm sure they do too. Thank you, Mr. Danison. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Danison? Well, we've got Mr. Lakeman up there. Let's uh, see if we've got any questions can for I, you. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, let's assume they have to take down this garage to replace the leach field. Is it your position that it just can't go up or it has to go up exactly as it was before? Or what, what are they supposed to do uh, with the garage? Is it? Gee, I, I, I guess they'd have luck? to. I guess they'd have to live within the parameters of the law. I do. <clears throat> so you've got you've got a freestanding you garage. Question. I'd like I'd like to know when the soils tests were done for the for the septic system. Was it prior to February? Did they know that they had to tear down the garage? Why why is my client being put on trial when this person is coming in saying, "Gee, I just bought a piece of property and I want to make substantial changes, and I really don't think the the uh, the ordinance applies to me." If you think your client's on trial, you haven't been to one of our meetings when we've had a tough one. Uh, so, and, and that's not our intent, I assure you. Uh, we're just trying to sort through, number one, contradictory evidence, and number two, to see whether there's any solution to this problem that's within the various powers of the board. And uh, the, It's my understanding that the garage is how many square feet? And that the addition is how many square feet? A total of 400 square feet. It's footprint. How many, how many square feet of living space is it? It's two stories. Does that mean it's 800 square feet? I, do the math for me. We're not getting all this on records. Yeah, I'm going to deal with that in a second. Go ahead. I mean, it, it's Hang 320 on, square feet down and substantially more up. Okay. Just a second, if I could, just to get the record straight. Uh, Mr. Daniels was asking questions of the applicant and her builder, Mr. Davis, and the answer to the first question was the garage was 320 square feet, I believe. And okay, that's already in the record. The question was, what's the total square footage of the floor area? So roughly 1,000 square feet, give or take, uh, for the total square footage, including the garage floor. Yeah. Okay. Did, did that get the answer you wanted? I just wanted to answer uh, okay. his question. So I see it as 328 square feet down and 1,000 square feet up. That's not, that's not replacing something because of septic failure. That's deciding to build an addition and take advantage of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Danielson. Uh, any questions for Mr. Lakeman before he assists them? No. Go ahead. Mr. Keneally? Oh, Mr. Page? I'm sorry, Ms. Page. Let's finish with this okay. side and then yeah. let her come up afterward, all right? So are any questions for Mr. Lakeman? No. Uh, if not, uh, are, why don't you sit down, Ms. Page, we'll get to you in just a minute. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against the uh, application? Anyone who wishes to speak at all on the application, either, either for or against? Hearing none. Uh, now, Ms. Page, I'm sorry to make you jump up and down here, but... Uh, I had invited you to come back and speak, but Mr. Keneally had a question for you. Why don't we get to that first? Okay, there were two other things. Um, Just a minute. Let me ask. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get Mr. Keneally's question, and then we'll deal. With it. Um, when I look at your the subsurface wastewater disposal system application, um, it shows the septic lines going out from the house to a septic tank and to a leach field, mm -hmm. and there's no overlap of that with the existing garage. So, I'm, I, you have to speak up. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay. There is no overlap of the septic system planned uh, with the current garage. So I, I don't see any need here to either relocate or remove the garage to, to accommodate a septic system. It is under the garage. Not according to this diagram. Okay. Zach? You asked about the current or the 
I can't hear you. If you look at the toe of the fill, um, uh, Jack, uh, which is the heavy black line, it needs that toe in order to maintain a, this three to one slope, which is required by code. So the, the, uh, it would have to, the, the fill would have to be sloped at such an angle to prevent washout and breakout. And that's, and you, if you see that, you'll see the toe goes three quarters of the way through the garage. So the garage would have to come down because of the toe of the fill. It's on the next page. Have you, did you, have you got page three of the design? Okay. That area needs to be re-excavated for the toe. Okay. Now, let's check the depth. What is Mr. Fristache, did you have a question? I was just checking the depth of the uh, uh, to hard rock on, on the uh, septic system. Is that 20 inches, 19 inches? Test pit one looks like it's 28 inches, 20, 27 inches. Test pit two is up there. Um, all right, this date, the date of this septic design was uh, January 6, 99, to answer a question that was asked earlier. And it was done for a uh, William, is it William Humble Associates? And he's recorded as the owner of the property? That's correct. Okay. And it also shows that it's a three bedroom house. It's designed for a three-bedroom house. Well, it says existing bedrooms two and proposed three. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Did you get the answers to everything you were looking for? I was just providing information. Oh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I thought you were trying to get that confirmed. So. No, no. I do have a question, though. It was brought up in, in the uh, uh, public segment uh, um, regarding the historical nature of this building. Uh, do we have the Historical Preservation Committee up and running at this particular time? This is, this is not on our list of historical. This is not on the list. Okay, that answers that question, then. Uh, now, Ms. Page, you had... Any additional comments? Uh, in particular, I'd want you to focus on uh, the letter from Mr. Danielson. Okay, on the letter from Mr. From Mr. Danielson. Uh, Sunday night, I did go over and uh, introduce myself to Faye Lakeman. Um, it was early in the evening. They had just gotten home. Um, I was told by her then they had everything. They didn't want to see the plans. They didn't need to see anything. And that was it for that. So apparently prior to, they had all the information. Um, with the letter here from Mr. Danielson to the town of Cape Elizabeth, under section 19.5.2 of the zoning ordinance, provides that the variance not be granted if it does not constitute undue hardship, as defined by 30 AMRSA section 4353. The term undue hardship means, one, the land in question not yield reasonable returns unless the variance is granted, and two, the need for a variance is due to unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition of the neighborhood. We have a unique circumstances of the property here. The way the property is designed or designed is set out, it would not meet with any uh, variances or, excuse me, setbacks anywhere. This property has been there for 60 years. So they built on it what they could, when they could to, to at the time. So right there is that a unique circumstances for their property because we can't go anywhere else. We're just trying to do our best with what we have. And, um, and we hope that this would make for an improvement rather than uh, a problem. Thank you, Ms. Page. Oh, wait, could I ask a question? Please. Uh, Ms. Page, in your application, uh, the question says why the land in question can't yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. You stated, and I quote, existing garage must be uh, shoe torn down, and so much a typo. For a new septic system in Leachfield, it would be a hardship to go without a garage in the harsh Maine winter. The current garage is placed within seven feet of a curve on Two Lights Road. This causes a dangerous traffic situation uh, to uh, 
back in her battle to try to propose allocation allows room for turnaround drive and would be safer for everyone. Uh, I note that you say nothing about the need for additional living space in your application, but you are applying for a variance that includes additional living space, and I don't see any justification in the statement why your land can't yield a reasonable return uh, without the additional living space. Well, like I said, uh, because of our growing family, it is a small house. It's barely big enough for one, and we're trying to make it big enough for four. Um, Did you buy it with the knowledge that it was a small house and that you needed a variance to expand it? Did I? I'm sorry, Did you repeat. buy the house with the knowledge that you needed a variance to expand it? No, I did not. I did not know we needed variances. I did not know setbacks, things like that, no. And then that brings the next question to me, is that if you bought the property without investigating the need for a variance and what you could do with it, then one of the other criteria for variance is that the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And so if you bought a property that you could not expand through uh, failure to determine what the expansion potential was, how do you address the issue of that the hardship is not, uh, that the hardship is not the result of action taken by you? You bought the property how it is not exactly taken by me. Um, first off, the house is, is unlivable, as is. But you bought the property. Correct. So you have a hardship th through buying the property. If you ha and my question is, if you, in if you engendered a hardship through buying the property, how do you satisfy the criterion that the hardship is not a result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner? Well, not knowing that the septic system was no good not knowing that, that you had to have the variances in order to, and that the only place the septic and the leach field can go is under the garage that meets the setbacks. We did not know that. Um, you know, any of this, we just, we, this is all new to us. This is a learning experience for us to, to learn all this and to know that, you know, even, the, even though the house right now sits Six point, six, about seven feet on one corner and three feet on another corner from Beacon Lane in the back, we're actually pulling it away from Beacon Lane at nine feet with the addition. So the, how, the existing house is there now, and that's not going anywhere. So we're actually making improve, more improvements and pulling it away from the road as much as we can. Uh, it, the, qu the question occurs, did, when you were purchasing the property, did you have uh, a professional realtor and or a lawyer involved in the, in the proceedings? A professional realtor, yes. A lawyer, no. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. N another question about when you, before you purchased it, did you do soil testing? No, that was done prior to uh, Bill Umble had done that. The septic, the septic system, the septic plans and things, that was done prior to, and we had gotten a copy of that after the closing. Those are the papers that, that, that the paper Joe work. and Jack were looking at earlier in the, it's January. 90. So you did not see those prior to the purchase? <coughs> no, no. They were not done yet, or, or I don't know what it was, but we received it in the packet at the, sign of, at the time of closing. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Well, my limited knowledge of real estate law is when you're looking at a piece of property, they give you a disclosure statement. And in that disclosure statement, it spells out if the septic system is functioning properly or if it needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, this clearly was done prior to your purchase of the property mm -hmm. with the current, or the, excuse me, the previous owner mm -hmm. here. Um, so, I mean, I'm, someone was not providing you with all the information that you needed to make an intelligent decision whether you purchased this property or not. We knew it needed to be replaced, if that's what we knew that, but we just didn't receive the plans for it. They had told us the house was in total disarray and that it needed everything. So we I did know said, that. I thought you said you didn't know whether it needed a new septic. Oh, no, we knew that. We just didn't receive the plans, uh, how it was going to go in. 
is what I'm uh, saying. So, but we didn't have to. We didn't have to have someone go out and do it. It was already done for us by the prior owner. Any other questions for Ms. Page? Um, yes. I don't know if this is relevant or not, but I just wanted a, a clarification. What's your current address now? Your our, our current address? Residential address. Is 5388 Portland Avenue in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. My husband, we are transferring out here uh, April of next year. I will be here hope, in April. My husband's doing a job transfer. And this will be our primary residence. This will not be a, a seasonal home or a summer home, as you call it. Thank you, Ms. Page. If there's no other questions, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I uh, will declare the hearing closed unless there's somebody that was moved to speak now that what didn't before. And uh, seeing none, we'll open it up for board discussion. Somebody want to start off? I'd like to throw out a question that it, I'm getting a sense that it's a concern to people uh, what sort of knowledge the purchaser of the property had beforehand uh, and that I'm getting the sense that that is a bearing on some people's decision uh, and I, I would like if, if that is the case I'd like a better understanding of why someone might actually how that is relevant and which of the four considerations we have is it actually relevant to? I think it's D. The hardship, D says why the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant. And I think the implication from what Joe was saying is that perhaps the hardship is the result of action taken by the applicant, the action being not engaging an attorney to review the. Uh, but that's something she didn't do, not something right. she did. Mm -hmm. There was no action taken by her that created that condition. Well, if, if it had, that isn't the form of a question, uh, let me give you my response. If a person, uh, the, the hard, the applicant says she has a hardship. Her hardship is her house uh, is too small. Well, how did she get into the position of owning a too small a house? She went out and she bought a too small a house without looking at the requirements for expanding that house. So if a person buys something and then it's a lemon, then I see that as she created the hardship for herself by buying a property which is too small for her needs and failure to uh, establish what her uh, potential for, build, for addition and building is. Um, okay. We're done with that. I just want to go back uh, to Mr. Smith for a minute, to Bruce. Uh, it, it would be my understanding that if the expansion weren't involved here and if the garage weren't changed, there wouldn't be any need for the board to be involved with this uh, application. Uh, straighten me out if I'm wrong. If, if things were in the I was, She just wanted to uh, renovate and repair the existing uh, dilapidated home. That's correct. That doesn't require any kind of uh, That's correct. variance, setback, or reduction, or anything else. Correct. Okay. Um, and that may be a partial answer to your question, or at least a, another answer to your question. Uh, any other discussion that board members want to throw out? Uh, I'd just like to point out that in the past, the board recognized the need for garage in this, in this climate and has approved many garage as variants. To my knowledge, in my either service on the board, uh, there has never been a garage approved with the addition on top of it. That we said, a garage is a garage, you need a garage. Yes, we recognize the need for the garage, but I can cite you several cases where people wanted to build over the garage and that was denied. I think in fairness and consistency, uh, if you continue in that line. I also think that when we have granted variances in the past, uh, we've sort of had uh, you know, swallow hard and look the other way because the criteria are so incredibly rigid uh, about that land and land in question can't yield a reasonable return. We have formally recommended that the town change its ordinance to the uh, unreasonable, what is it? Uh, practical, diff practical difficulty. If part of that is that I can't negatively impact uh, adjacent landowners, then I think that we have to 
at least take that into consideration, which is a less rigid criteria. And if we formally approve and say, boy, if this negatively impacts somebody else's land, it's probably a bad idea. So I have problems. If we use, use the real strict ordinance, neither Ms. Page nor anybody else would ever get a variance, or very, very rarely. If we use the, uh, if we proceed as we have and, and, and approve uh, garages, then the, it, the living space above the garage, I think, does, does not meet the criteria. That's my, where I'm coming from, and I'm willing to listen to other arguments. Are there other arguments? I mean, I think this is a very difficult lot where the house is located. The lot is roughly 60 feet wide, so there's, there's going to be a variance problem no matter what one does. Um, I also think that the fact that the existing structure is only three feet from the Beacon Way um, is, an, is a beginning problem, but I don't think that necessarily justifies intensifying the, the um, violation of the variant setback by putting the new structure so close to Beacon Way. I'm sympathetic to what's being tried to be done here, but I would much prefer to see the proposed addition be set back in some way so it wasn't so close. And I think that it's just intensifying the violation of the current um, zoning setback requirements. Joe? Tom's sense may be correct but it also puts us, uh, the action that, that's happened here over the past several months has put us in an awkward position. And maybe I, for one, may be overreacting to what's happened. The bottom line is I think we do have a difficult lot. We've got a difficult situation with the existing structures, the need for a septic system. But I think that what is proposed to us is maybe an overdevelopment of a substandard uh, or an, and a non-conforming non lot. Uh, I too would probably look more favorably upon um, a different request, different structure. Um, my question to the code enforcement officer, if they took this existing building and went up with it, made it a colonial, a 30 by 30 colonial, uh, and put a second story on the existing structure. Is that allowable under the cur under the um, current? It already uh, is a uh, it is there already is a second story. It's not a full second story, but well, that's what I'm talking about. Is a full second story. They have it. Any any increase in the square footage, even upward, would require a variance from this board. Okay. Well, I. Um, go back to what Bob said uh, several, several minutes ago. Uh, they've addressed the garage as a hardship, but I don't think that that's where the emphasis should have been uh, placed. It should have been placed on the need for larger, a larger house. But I, I haven't been convinced that there's, a, um, that there's a hardship here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. You know, if these people had come to us beforehand, um, it would have been the exact same issues. Uh, nothing about the property or its characteristics would be any different. Um, and if there's no basis for granting a variance, there isn't whether they did it then or whether they did it now. Um, it's, they just can't have it. Um, so I just don't think it should be a consideration that, that wasn't done uh, before they purchased the property. The problem is if, if, if we would have if they had come to us then, we would have had the exact same problems. They wouldn't have bought it, and they still have this crummy piece, of, this crummy building uh, in a nice neighborhood. That said, um, they bought it, which speaks against the fact that they can't get a reasonable rate of return because somebody did buy it then. Uh, and, and this might be an instance where uh, this overly rigid, um, sometimes silly zoning provision uh, hurts good intentions of people. And perhaps the community. That's the discussion we had with the planning board last month. <clears throat> um, let me try one more question, Bruce, and I'm going to push for a uh, motion here. Um, 
I don't know if this has come up before, and if it has, I just don't have a good memory, but I don't find any provision in the variance uh, criteria and the hardship criteria about the ability of the board to attach conditions uh, to uh, an approval for a variance. Is, is that just my failure to find it, or is that the case? It's on page 44. It says the board may impose conditions on the variance, including limiting the variance to the duration. Oh, that's a disability. You're right. There isn't any yeah. language. Okay. Yep. My understanding and my experience was that you have to take the application as written. Yeah. Vote it up. That's what I understood, but I saw the civility language, and I wondered if there was something somewhere else that I'm missing, but, uh, but that's clear. Um, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Prepared for a motion, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't have a motion yet, but I have another question. Um, given that I think all in the in all are in agreement that this is a, a piece of property that the community would like to see improved somehow, what are the options under the current ordinance? Or if the if it's amended, um, if if the ordinance is amended to give us more flexibility, under what conditions would we be comfortable with approving a variance under the under you know I think we need to be clear in 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 um, guidance for the future for this property whether it stays with this ownership or whether it whether it changes what what are the options available for this property under the current ordinance and under the proposed changes in the ordinance whenever that does happen well um that's a legitimate and interesting question, but not one I'd like to see discussed because I don't think it's appropriate for the board to, in effect, be telling this applicant or any other how to design their property. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I agree so. with you, but it's, I think it's a dilemma for this kind of a situation. No question about it. Um, it's, no question. it's certainly clear in my mind that um, with all the discussion that it doesn't, it, in, other, in order for us to grant a variance under the current ordinance, we have to meet all four conditions, and this does not meet that. Yeah. For, and I agree with, with other members for that. But it does raise valid questions about what kinds of guidance, whenever anyone comes to the town for a property such as this, we would give. Uh, I, I think that the dilemma that we keep finding ourselves in with this language is why we propose to the planning board that they consider recommending that the council adopt the alternate language that Mr. Danielson presented, which allows more flexibility to deal with some situations. It's not going to answer every problem, but that's one of the problems, uh, and I understand the planning board is still hung up with that language and is still working on it. Uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to come out. But for this, for the moment, and for the foreseeable future, we're, we have to work with the language we've got. And uh, I think the board has said a lot about what uh, they're comfortable with or uncomfortable with, as illustrated by this application. And I think that's as far as we probably want to go uh, to answer your question. But it's a that's a very good question. That doesn't mean, however, that, that the code enforcement officer can't ask, you know, at least from historic per perspective, provide information to applicants as to what in flies and what doesn't fly in the past based on experience. And if I may clarify a point that Mr. Yeah. Cronin made, uh, that you have to take it at a face value, but, but the board can, if they're not comfortable with six feet, can require 12 feet, for instance, for a setback, or they could require that the height be lessened by a story. Um, and that may be something that the board would want to consider, um, and maybe that would appease some of the neighbors' concerns, too. I'm not sure. Well, that's why I was asking the question earlier, if we could attach conditions, because the only other alternative I can think of is the board, and this is just, I'm tossing it out for off the top of my head without making a suggestion, but, and that is to just ask the applicant to table the matter and go back and see if there's a way to address any of the questions that have been raised. And what I have heard said here tonight is that the need for a garage is something that the board could be convinced to be uh, receptive to if it were properly laid out and presented. And if, but that, again, if I'm hearing things right, that the additional bulk of the living area is not acceptable under the criteria of the ordinance. And if that's the case, then the only, that's the only option I can think of. But if there's a possibility of having a condition attached, then that's another matter. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm not sure that, that the condition is the right word. A condition would be something that you put on the approval before you. A change to the to the to the the approval would be somewhat 
different. It would, you would automatically, you, and it happens all the time, where as long as it was advertised at six, you can pull it back to eight oh, or saying. whatever. Or as long as it's advertised for, and the plan showed three floors, right. that you could cut it back to two floors. I see. Uh, that's, an, uh, that's a given as long as you, you could not grant a variance at four feet if they're asking for one at six, but you could be more restrictive with your... Well, it may be the semantics here, but I see that as attachment of a condition because it would significantly alter the, the intentions of the owner and that, that well, it, it, the effective it, result is right it's a condition. That. In point of okay. precedence, if, if this application is denied tonight, then the applicant has to wait a year to come back for another variance, as I understand. What has been done in the past is that the applicant has got the sense of the board's mood and asked to be withdrawn. The board has permitted that, and people have re refiled applications uh, for a perhaps a single story garage within more appropriate placement. That's what's been done in the past. Can I ask Bruce a question? Please. Bruce, uh, is there a 30 foot setback requirement from both sides of the property line? That's here? correct. So you, you couldn't build anything new there? Yep. Not today, no. Nothing? Right. Correct. Without a variance. That's right. I'd like to reiterate that the neighbor's concerns have been with respect to views and not with respect to uh, relocation of the garage, as I understand it, but perhaps uh, it would be. I guess I would turn to the applicant and just say that I think you've heard what's happening. There is no formal motion on the floor. If you wanted to request the board to table this matter so that you could go back and reflect on what you heard, and come back uh, at the next meeting, we would entertain that. Uh, but uh, I think you can see that we're in a, a serious dilemma built by our own ordinance and by your failure to do your, I hate to use the phrase, but the lawyers call it due diligence. Mr. Danielson used it earlier. And uh, if you think you can get something out of it that will solve the problems that have been raised here and, and help the board uh, help you, we would be glad to take it up again. If you don't want to do that and you're done with it, then fine, we'll go ahead and get a motion and vote it and uh, probably deny it. Okay. So there's been a request from the applicant to table the matter for consideration at a later meeting. And uh, is, uh, is there a member that would make a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor of that motion? A point of information, Mr. Chairman, say table it. Is it we're tabling this application uh, or will it be replaced by another application? We're tabling this application. It's up to the applicant to do what, if anything, the applicant wants to do about it. And then the applicant would have to formally, we would have to formally withdraw this application at a subsequent meeting well, I have to contain a new one? Is that the procedure? Well, I don't know. Bruce could tell you the procedure, but the point is it has to be advertised to the public again and, right. and uh, okay. any modifications. Okay. If it's, if it's less less if it, if it if it's pulled back or lowered then then a re-advertisement wouldn't be necessary right. but right. a new plan could be submitted well nevertheless given the situation tonight and the interest in this i would suggest we try to find a way to get the word around the neighborhood in a formal or in at least a clear way so that people who have shown an interest both by the petition and their presence tonight uh, are clear what's happening next when that time comes so I'll, I'll leave it to you to try to figure out how to do that. But I mean, maybe just the grapevine from the people that are here, and I'm sure that'll work. But I would appreciate you doing that or arranging for that or whatever. A, a new, you want to advertise again? Well, you, if that's the way, you, the best way to do it, that's fine. But if, if you can find another way to do it, that's fine. If it's not legally required, and, and we just make sure that the people who appeared and or submitted uh, written documents get a letter from us saying that it's come up again, and here's the new proposal. Given the fact that, that attorneys are already involved in this thing, yes. I would really recommend that they be re I, I, I can see his. I can see his budget eyes going. That's all, you know. Well, no. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the normal procedure is is when it's tabled, it's already been notified, and the people that are interested were, came to the meeting, and, and therefore they go away, understanding that it's at the next meeting. I have no problem if the board wants to re-advertise. I just okay. don't know that I need see the need for that each and every time. Uh, in, in the case where the interest has been shown at this level, I think some method of notifying people should be undertaken. And if it's not advertised in even letters, as I said a minute ago, to the people who are here tonight, and you can ask the applicant to do that. That's fine with me. But. 
if the applicant submits a new application, that would have to be reactivized, right? As I said before, if the application reflects uh, something that's less intensive than what's what's asked here, then the advertisement would still stand. But somebody might object to this plan, but not object to scale down plan. You table the motion. If you if you wish to have her to withdraw, then certainly it would, the, the legality of this would be would 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 there be no question. I'd re-advertise the application. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you never asked if anyone was opposed. I, I know, I didn't finish. I didn't count any hands, but for the record, there was no one opposed because uh, everybody was in favor. You are, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I'm opposed. I apologize. Uh, Mr. LaProd was opposed, everyone else was in favor, and the motion is tabled at the request of the applicant, uh, and we will presumably see it on the next agenda. Uh, Next item on the agenda is uh, to hear the request of Elliot and Melanie Cutler, 1172 Shore Road, tax map R02, lot 4D, to replace the existing single family dwelling with a 12 by 20 foot pavilion at 37 feet from the high water line of the Atlantic Ocean. Set up. Okay. Yep. Good. Good evening. Please, um, far away. You are? Uh, I am Amy Bell Siegel. I'm a landscape architect for Terrence J. Dewan Associates. And with me tonight is Robert Knight from Knight Associates, an architectural firm from Blue Hill, Maine. Uh, we are here tonight on behalf of Elliot and Melanie Cutler, who are the owners of the property at 1172 Shore Road. Excuse me, Shore Road. Um, and we're here tonight to discuss the replacement of an existing non conforming cottage with a pavilion. Uh, the existing cottage is 1,066 square feet. The proposed pavilion is 240 square feet. And what I'd like to do is quickly go through the application, explain the site plan here, and then Bob will give you some more um, descriptive information about the structure itself and the design and materials. So if that's OK, I'd. You just fire away, and All right. we'll stop you when we have a problem. If we okay. Go ahead. Um, this is Shore Road up on top here. Property lines, oops, property lines along here, the ocean boundary, and the property line coming up here along the stone wall. The existing cottage is outlined here. Um, there's a light tan area and then a darker area. Um, so the existing structure is here. Again, that's 1,066 square feet. The proposed pavilion is located wholly within that footprint for the cottage, and that is 240 square feet, or 12 by 20 feet. Um, we're showing information about the entire site, so you can put it all in context. This is the house that um, we're proposing right now, the Cutler's proposing, where uh, we intend to submit our building permit application to Bruce um, within the week. Uh, the existing driveway comes in along here, sort of loops around and goes back. The proposed driveway will loop around this way. Um, this is a garage, tennis court. Um, there's some uh, hardscape areas out in here. And proposed septic system out there. The lines, as they show on the property, and this is the top of bank or the resource protection line. This is a 75-foot setback from that line. And as you can see, the existing cottage falls completely within that 75-foot setback. All the proposed structure of the house, pool, etc., is all beyond that 75 foot setback. This line here is a shoreland overlay district 250 foot setback from the normal high water line. 
So I think that gives you the information you need on the site plan. Can I just state the obvious for the record, which is yep. that, as I understand you to be saying in your summary there, is that it's the destruction of the cottage and the building of a smaller pavilion is the only thing in the Correct. work that you've described Correct. that requires approval from the board. Correct. We're, we're here to discuss the replacement of that cottage with this pavilion. All of this is just provided for your information. Um, it is not part of the application. Okay. Um, the Cutlers uh, understand that right now that they could come in and move into this house right here, possibly recite it. But what they really want to do is reduce the uh, level of use within that 75 foot setback and while maintaining the spectacular view that you get from that location. And the structure, the pavilion, is, is basically that, uh, just a place to go and take advantage of that viewpoint. Um, it's a passive area. There's no sanitary facilities, um, no bedrooms, nothing like that. It's actually an open air structure, so it's just a place to sit, watch the ocean, watch the wildlife, enjoy the space. Um, the, it will not generate any additional traffic per se because it's not, you know, a, a home business or anything like that. It's simply an accessory structure to the main house. Um, and like I mentioned, the, there's no sanitary, there's no bathrooms, no sanitary facilities in the pavilion itself. Um, the existing cottage does have two bedrooms and has some type of septic system somewhere. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, that will be all removed. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the septic system for the home is located back here. So this pavilion won't have any bathrooms in it. Um, as far as the affecting the value of adjacent properties, uh, we don't believe that this will adversely affect the properties because for the most part, this structure is not visible from the immediate abutters. Uh, there's two, two homes over here that generally don't get a view of this structure because of the wooded nature between these two structures and the pavilion, and that will all be maintained for the most part. Um, there is uh, two lots over here that have not, well, one is being built on, and the one directly adjacent that has not been built on yet. Um, and again, there's a lower topography, and for the most part, probably most of the year, they don't get a view of this structure um, because of the, the existing vegetation along this edge in here. The lots, building lots being here and here. Um, there is views of the pavilion uh, or the existing cottage um, from across Seb Cove and in our package we showed you a view that you know, approximates that existing view um, from the ocean side looking back. That, that photograph, the view of the existing cottage from the ocean side is taken from generally down here on the beach looking back towards the cottage. Okay, um, as far as the a compatible use, um, all of the surrounding lots are residential. Many of those have accessory structures. So we feel that this is an accessory structure to the pavilion is a compatible use with the surrounding properties. Um, and just in general, uh, the pavilion will take on a similar character to the architecture that is being proposed for the house and I'll let Bob explain a little bit more about these drawings here and more of the information about the structure itself. Uh, before that happens, I just want to be clear, uh, you were using some criteria that are not the ones that I'm thinking we're working with here. Uh, can you clarify for me? Uh, your reference in the proposed, ordinance, uh, proposed order is 1944B3. Uh, which is the reconstruction replacement. Right. And uh, I show you concerns. So get me back to the right criteria here because she's reading from a different set. <laughs> Use the conditional use. You use the stand as a conditional use. Um, 
and it's written here somewhere. Um, she, she was referring to this conditional use standards, which is still part of the application, and it would have to be met. Mm -hmm. um, it should be listed here somewhere. Well, what you've you got in the order, uh, the criteria relate to the same one that we had on the first application tonight, the size of the lot, slope of the land, and so on for relocation, right. or in this case, replacement. It's a replacement. Uh, and so I just want to make sure the board, since all the criteria she's been talking about are not part of our proposed order, the board's going to end up confused here. So I need to be, if, if there's something else that we ought to be looking at, let's get it straight now before we go any further. It strikes me that this is a change of a non-conforming, change of use of a non-conforming structure. That's a planning board prerogative on uh, page 38. Well, if you look at uh, 1944B3, it refers, and we're, now we're talking in the statutory, or the criteria in the ordinance relating to a shoreland overlay district, uh, it refers to non-conforming structures which are uh, damaged or destroyed. And I've already asked for this interpretation. I've been told that damage can be self-inflicted. That is, you can tear it down. Willfully destroyed. Uh, so I would understand, therefore, with just that limited information, the criteria uh, in front of us are the ones that, that are in the order for re relocation or re replacement. That, uh, and I don't care which they are, I just want to make sure we're acting on the right uh, criteria, that's all. Well, if nothing else, you have to have that plus the other criteria, and I guess the, the, uh, the application really should be done over to reflect both if both needed. If not, then we'll eliminate the conditional use. But uh, I guess I'm not clear. I mean, the, the, this provision we were just talking about refers us back to 1944B2, which is the criteria you have in your proposed order. Right. Uh, now, say again what you just it said. It's my understanding. The yep. application talked about the conditional use standards, and, and I, that application may have to be looked at to be done over uh, to to more conform to the audience. It was an application that, that had been on file, and I didn't realize, I guess, that there is a discrepancy with based on this 97, so I'll have to take a look at that. Is, is, is it your belief that there, there would be a proper application required for conditional use for this particular proposal? It was my belief, but I can't find it in here, so I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. wondering if maybe that application that we have on file is somewhat outdated. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to suggest to the applicant that we deal with what's in front of us. Okay. And that doesn't include some of the criteria you read. Okay. Uh, and the board will act accordingly, and then you and Bruce can okay. sort it out. If there's another problem, we'll apologize and, and deal with it later. But uh, okay. Because the board doesn't have any of the information okay. that you're talking about. Uh, so let me go back, therefore, to the question that you or anybody else can address. And let me just say, well, I don't think we want to make a really big deal out of this because, you know, we're talking about a relatively small impact here, and we just want to be sure it's meeting uh, the criteria. Okay. Uh, in terms of the size, it's relatively small. The criteria that are listed are the ones I mentioned a minute ago, which are the size of the lot, the slope of the land, potential for soil erosion in the construction process, the location of other structures on the property or adjacent properties, location of septic system, impact on views, and the type of amount of vegetation to be removed. Uh, those are the criteria which appear on page 30. No, I've lost it. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Oh, you get those for the criteria I just read. Here, where the hell are they? Uh, B, B2. Uh, anyway, man, we'll find it if you need it, but. Okay. And I think you've addressed some of them in, in the comments okay. you've already made. So uh, let me just guide you a little bit by asking uh, questions that I think might be an issue. The slope of the land okay. in terms of erosion or any other impact uh, okay. at that location. 
and that location. Mm -hmm. Okay, generally there's a ledge outcrop right here, the senior plan, and there's one here. This generally slopes gradually, and then there is a uh, steeper grade heading down to a rocky uh, cliff area and a beach area in here to, to the water. Um, uh, the existing, see, I think the back of the house is at about existing grade is like 30, elevation 37. Um, the structure, the pavilion itself, will maintain that grade and not go lower. The, there'll be a six foot wall in the back of the structure here, and the pavilion will go up. But the actual floor elevation is, maybe it should be. Yeah, the factual floor elevation of the pavilion will be lower than the, the existing cottage. So the structure itself will sit lower. Um, so generally that's, you know, we're not going to be changing the existing grade. We're going to be using what's there. I mean, I'll propose changing the grade um, directly behind it within the, that area there. And that's um, all wooded, I take it, or, or at least um, Generally, yeah, it's all wooded in here. The, the cleared areas for the driveway in here mm -hmm. and, you know, just generally around the existing structure, it's cleared out. There's some lawn, you know, smaller lawn areas, but. Uh, we've already addressed the septic system. I'm just trying to speed this up a little bit here, so. Okay. Uh, the impact on views, is the pavilion any larger or wider, or higher, excuse me, than the, uh, than the house, you just said it would no, be lower. It's lower. lower. It's, a, it's lower, its roof is lower. Um, as you can see, the existing cottage, you know, is that shape, so the pavilion will sit wholly within that, so it won't be any wider than the existing cottages, as far as what you see from the water. And is there any, going to be any need to remove vegetation uh, or create erosive conditions in the process of destroying and rebuilding? No. no. Building inside the footprint of the existing building. Okay. The response and, came from Mr. Knight, for the record. Yep. Okay. Uh, I probably should clarify some setback stuff, too. Um, the uh, agenda says that we're 37 feet from the high water, let's see, from the high water line. Um, that's not exactly true. We're 37 feet from the top of the bank at the closest point. We're actually 80 feet from this blue line here, which is the normal high water line. I just want to clarify that. And we will not be getting any closer than that. Well, by definition, you're probably 37 feet from the high water line, meaning the top of the bank. It's a matter of semantics, but the definition. Right. Right. OK, I just wanted to sort of if clarify that. If you were 80, you wouldn't be here before the board. Right, because we're within 75 feet. Yeah, I understand that. But just wanted to clarify that that, that 37 feet is from the top of the bank, and that's, how, that's what we used um, with Bruce to determine that. Um, the setbacks from the side would increase from 80 feet to 87 feet, you know, and from this end it's, you know, 340 to here would increase to 370. And as I mentioned, oh, and then the front is, it goes from 330 feet to 352 feet. So it generally increases in all directions and does not change from the water side. Um, is, is there any other information from either you or Ms. Knight you think is critical to the board making a decision on this? Um, we'll ask you some questions perhaps, but uh, short of that. So generally the size, you've got the size of the structure, um, slope, soil, uh, butters. As I mentioned, there's two structures, uh, one here and one here, two butters, existing houses. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be maintaining, you know, pretty much the majority of all this vegetation between them and the structure. Um, there's, there's two, there's a house being built here and um, one uh, building lot right here. And they are lower, and generally they can't see that the cottage now, so we don't think they will be seeing the proposed pavilion. Um, septic system, indeed, views. So, oh, and you know, there may be views. The views from like the Zeb Cove end may change in that you have a white sided cottage now, and we're proposing to put a pavilion that will be smaller, um, but it'll have uh, more natural tones, earth tones uh, for siding. It won't be white and as contrasty, so it would blend a little bit better with. Which you would argue vegetation. would be better, except for people who love white cottages, right? So, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Anything else? Um, I think if that answers your questions, yeah, I let's think find out. It. Board members have any questions on this matter for Ms. Siegel? I was amused by your suggestions that the cutlers might be able to move into the cottage. I find that unlikely. Uh, well, they know that they could do <laughs> they that could right it. now. Yeah. Okay. 
if there are no questions, uh, Mr. Knight, do you have anything burning that has to be added? Uh, uh, well, I have some thing, since you're probably curious about what this looks like. Uh, we already have those photographs in our package. Oh, these are new? Okay, sorry. Uh, The building that's there, taken from this point of land right down at their property line, looking back up, and, and that's the pavilion. Right. <laughs> just in the foreground here, you can see the little pavilion. I mean, we thought it would be disingenuous to not show you the house behind. Sure. Um, if you look at this drawing, you can see, and I, I, I'm sorry, I have another copy I can give you, but. Um, yeah. So if the board members looked at the lower photograph and near the middle there's a brown uh, vertical line and low down and to the right of that is the green roof of the pavilion as proposed, correct? This is the, only the color, yep. this little open roofed structure is what we're talking about. Okay. That's the only thing that's inside the 75 feet. Right. And I think it, I mean, obviously there's a good size house that's getting built back behind the 75 feet. That's not really the subject of this uh, discussion, but the pavilion is just a little roofed 12 by 20 foot thing, which is largely transparent. I mean, it's open to the weather. It's a roof, mm -hmm. gonna have a little low wall around it, a little, you know, barbecue fireplace thing. We understand. Um, uh, so this house is under construction. It's not actually currently occupied? No, it's it's not under construction yet. We will be applying for the. Oh, will be. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hope Misunderstood. I thought it was already underway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Knight. Now, any questions for the? Uh, I have a question. I have a question of you, or the code enforcement officer. What set of guidelines are we looking at here? Are we look. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're working. Six? We're working with uh, the the starting point is uh, the bottom of page 37, which is reconstruction or replacement, and the specific criteria are the ones that are listed on the proposed order that uh, Bruce uh, provided for you. And, and the, the questions are the ones I was asking of the architect, size of lot, slope of land, so on. Uh, and the, the finding that the board makes is that it either does or does not meet the setback to the greatest practical extent to the following. Mr. Chairman. Please. Why are we not also considering condition number four on page 38, which is change of use of a non-conforming structure? Well, that's the question that, yes. that I was discussing with Bruce earlier, and there seems to be some confusion about that. Uh, page 38? Is yeah, it, on page 38, it, item number four. Isn't that the use of uh, residential property? And I, don't th I don't think that, I originally had Ann's question, but I, I don't think that's, that's applicable. I mean, it's still residential property. Yes. And it's, so it's not a change of use. It's not being used for right. a boat repair facility or a, or a restaurant. It's a non-conforming structure, but it's, yeah, it's the not use is changing. It's yeah. still yeah. residential. This, this, just to clarify, this would not be considered a change of use? No. It's still residential. It's a residential use. It's part of a residential use. Rather than a, as opposed to commercial. Rather than a retail use yes. or, or some other category. So what I, what I sort of made an executive decision about a little while ago when we were discussing this is that because the, uh, Ms. Siegel was using the criteria from the conditional use thing, and I couldn't understand why since we didn't have it in front of us, and I made the decision based on what Bruce told me that I would ask the board tonight if you agree to focus on uh, the criteria that are in front of you in the proposed order, and then if Bruce has got a, le a leftover problem with conditional use, which he apparently is not clear about right now, that he and the applicant can work out, and if we have to deal with it again, we will as a separate item. She, we, she did cover them. We did ha have those. You were well aware of those, but they weren't on the application, so it isn't the applicant's fault. It's no, I'm not, I'm not talking about fault. It's just a question no, of... No, but it, it, it's the application that needs to be updated with this criteria from the 97 code that's been passed, um, rather than the conditional use standards. Yeah, there is point of information. So the only thing before us is the provisions of this, the construction or replacement shall be in compliance with the water setback requirement to the greatest extent possible as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with the purposes of this district. Is that the only issue before us? Right. Oh. That's what I've ruled, yes. 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 Um. Uh, and then could I ask the architect, uh, 
is this the case? Is this reconstruction replacement uh, set back in the waters to the greatest extent possible? Um. Well, I, I need to point out, just so we don't get confused here, that, that the language, I believe, is great, the greatest practical extent. And so that's right. the question. And, and uh, they believe that, or they wouldn't be here. It's yeah. the board practical is up for the board to decide by the criteria I was listing. I mean, I suppose because of the large size of the lot, you could argue that the pavilion could be up near the road, uh, but uh, that's not, you, a, not an argument I would make, but you could make if, that. If I could re respond. Sure. Um, our clients realized that they could use that building. I mean, as it exists, they could clean it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, they didn't really have a need to do that. Um, what they really wanted to do was capture that view. and. They, we worked this out with them, and they, we feel that this is certainly has less impact on the view, which is probably the most significant part of this for anybody. I mean, people sailing by, I don't know what, they're pretty much the only people <coughs> see it, but um, this will be a much less visible structure than what's there now, which the clients could continue to use. Okay. I mean, we'd have to change the architecture and stuff to, I mean, the, the rest of the building. And I don't know, I don't know what they would or would not do, but this seemed us to be a pretty big reduction in, in the impact of the building that was there. That's okay. why we felt we could come before you on that. Thank you. There. Any other questions for the applicant? Are you then saying that this is not the maximum extent possible, but it's better than what we have now? It's the, and it, it's the maximum extent that's practical if they want to keep that view. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's. Um, well, I mean, it sounds like you're asking us to do some horse trading. Uh, that I have a criteria here that says you, you must relocate it to the maximum extent possible. You're saying it's not the maximum extent possible, but it's better off than we have now. And is that. Am I, framing well, this, am I framing this issue correctly? This is what I'm asking. Uh, I mean, my reading of this is it's your, it's up to you, you have the discretion. If someone wants to replace a building that's, that's non-conforming by virtue of the fact that it's closer than 75 feet, this board has the discretion to look at the proposed package and see if it's meets the intent of the ordinance to the greatest practical extent. So it's a, it's a judgment call. I mean, we, it's true that the clients want to, they're closer than 75 feet to the ocean and they want, if you stand out here, you get a spectacular view along the face of the cliff. When you're back here, you don't get that. So they're not asking to sort of keep this whole house out here, but they would sure like to, you know, have a little shelter out there. And it's, it seemed like enough of, so that, that, it, it, it's a ladder disjunct. You, you want us to do some horse trading. Okay, thanks. Well, let me just go back, though, because you said something that either you're reading from someplace different than I am or we're open for confusion here, because you used the word maximum extent. Oh, uh, sorry, did I say yeah. I, the greatest practical extent? There you go. And I, I think there's a big difference in that. Uh, okay. Okay. Just as I read it, I, I can't say but defend that statement legally, but maximum implies, like I said earlier, put up by the road. <laughs> Greatest practical instant, it seems to me you take into consideration what the intent of the user is and what's there now and so on and so forth in the context of a replacement or a reconstruction. And uh, it, that's how I'm thinking about it. So any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. We'll uh, close the hearing unless there's somebody else who wants to testify. I assume you're here for the last application. Uh, and uh, it's open for board discussion. If there is none, is there a motion from someone that we can work with? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we approve the application uh, to replace an existing single family dwelling with a 12 foot by 20 foot pavilion at 37 feet from the high water line of the ocean. And you're basing that proposed uh, motion or that motion on the fact that the criteria established uh, under this uh, requirement of which there are, was it, two, four, seven 
are, in your opinion, met? That they are not, that they are met to the greatest practical extent? Yes. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Now discussion on the motion. All those in favor of the motion. Is there any opposed? One opposed, Mr. Cronin. Thank you, folks. Sorry it took so long. It seemed simple when we started. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where do the Cutlers live now, by the way? Uh, Washington, well, D.C. Well, actually, no, Melanie well, lives in Portland. Melanie just moved here. She's going to be doing a residence here. Main Med. Main Medical. So they took an apartment. We're sort of moving up. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can we have a turn Yes. Everybody needs a stand-up break for a second, uh, three minutes here, and we'll uh, come right back and get this over with. Sorry for keeping you folks waiting so long. Uh, and I haven't even got to the right page here. This application involves uh, Laletta and Ronald Aubrey. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Let me get my... Let me get it into the record here. Uh, and it is to hear the request of Loletta and Ronald Aubrey of 37 Bowery Beach Road, tax map U17, lot 45, for a front property line variance of 40 feet from the required 50 feet, a left side property line variance of 11 feet 3 inches from the required 30 feet, a right side property line variance of 6 feet 6 inches from the required 30 feet, and a rear property line variance of 13 feet 9 inches from the required 30 feet to replace an existing single family dwelling. Is there anything that's okay with this place? <laughs> We've got all four sides here, huh? Oh, you have a tough, tough chore here. So go ahead and tell us about it. Well, uh, we purchased this property back in uh, March two years ago. Uh, in 1903, my uh, wife's grandfather and grandmother bought the property. So it's been in the, the Olson family that long. In fact, uh, she stayed with her grandmother there because she grew up right next door to who, where my daughter lives now. She owns the uh, property next to it. We bought that. And that was uh, her parents' house. Uh, the day before this property went on the market, we found out about it. So we were interested and we went and went in and looked at it that morning. And when they had it, we bought it, the uh, auction. And uh, we couldn't believe what. It was just all torn apart. They had left two dogs in there when they had moved out for three days. And, uh, it was just an old house. Uh, we, we were going to fix it up and rent it until we could sell our place in Scarborough, where we live now, and uh, eventually fix it up and, and live there. And uh, then we got looking at it. And all we really get out of it is a $10,000 septic system, which is there, and town water. I mean, the rest of it is just dysfunctional, uh, all BX, cable. I, I mean, it's just a mess. And the floors are, the living room floor is like eight inches lower than the kitchen floor. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, we thought about what it would take just to make it livable, and you're talking twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 probably. No heating system. Uh, the panel's been ripped off the wall. And uh, Okay, we'll take your word for it. It's a mess. Well, right. So we... Uh, started thinking what we could do with it. So I talked to Bruce numerous times for the last couple of years, and we thought, well, if we stay within the same framework and not increase the square footage, we wouldn't need a variance. We could tear it down and just build in the same, foot, in the same footprint. But then we ended up with like 35 feet in the air because it has 985 feet downstairs and 500 square feet, so you're 1,400 square feet. So you'd go up with probably a cathedral ceiling or something with some light, you know, some uh, windows on the uh, ocean side that you could roll out and get some sea breeze. Uh, but that would really, uh, it, it doesn't, didn't belong in the area, and it was not what we wanted. Uh, my daughter lives behind us, and uh, actually there's five relatives in the surrounding houses. And uh, so we come up with, after the third set of blueprints, this is what we come up with, a house that's uh, typical of the area, two floors, uh, three bedrooms, uh, a garage tucked in the back, and uh, it's only, uh, existing building now is 20 feet, this will be 27, 6 by 12 pitch. 
on the roof. Uh, and then the front porch, the original one was like uh, eight feet from the road. We shifted it over to the front of the house on the blueprint to make it eight feet. We wanted to turn the house a foot because the house is turned different than the houses behind. Uh, it doesn't impact on anyone. In fact, I visited seven of the neighbors and took the blueprints, showed them everything, and uh, I felt if anybody had a problem, they'd be here or they'd, they'd write. I don't know whether anybody did. But the house itself, if you're coming up from Jordan's, uh, Going to Scarborough, you can't see the house because of the spruce that were put in 50 years ago that are 20, 20 feet high. You go across the street where they built that house uh, just before the end, they planted trees out front. Years ago, you could see the ocean. Uh, they can't see our house because when I went over, I was talking with them on the porch and they said, We can't see it, so you know, it's not going to bother us. Uh, I don't know whether I gave you pictures I took from my daughter's house and the people next door. They're 100 to 125, 150 feet back. It doesn't impact uh, uh, on them at all. And as far as uh, looking down into Kettle Cove, uh, the new houses, it, it, they got that whole strawberry field in front of their house. Uh, outside of that, you know, we want to live there and uh, make it our home and uh, retirement home. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, just I want to be clear, there, it, the drawing shows the deck. Am I clear that that's on the existing house but not on the new house? It's not what? The, there's a deck that shows the... Uh, the deck that's on there now uh, is 18, uh, 8 by 19 and a half across the front. Yeah. The one we're proposing is going to be 9 feet out, and uh, I think it'll be 16 to 17 feet across on the other side. And this is on the front? Yes, it takes it, it, takes it back from the road. Right. Okay. We allowed seven feet front, four feet out for the front door. It'd be easier if one or the other was dotted so you could be clear what you're looking at, but because uh, there's so much overlap here. Okay. I thought, didn't I put it in yellow or was that the. Mm -hmm. You might oh, have got one. Yeah, on, on mine it's. Uh, it's kind you didn't of get one of the yellow ones? <laughs> I, I didn't get the rest of it. Okay, I see. I must have missed one. All right, no, it's my fault. It's, it's just light under the black line. I didn't see it. Um, okay. Uh, have you been here all evening? Yep. So you know what we just went through with a uh, similar proposal. <laughs> I almost made some comments, but my okay. wife wouldn't let me. Okay. Common uh, sense goes a long way. I'm sorry? I say common sense goes a long way. The only trouble is we have laws interfering. Well, this is one of the problems with the ordinance that we Yep. I've talked about several times tonight, and, uh, and uh, let me see if other board members have any questions of you, sir. The, uh, Mr. Cronin? You don't list the criteria for the need for variance. Land in question does not yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. See, a modern house standard requires a larger amount of square footage. Garages are the standard feature of modern houses, and the plan calls for modest sized houses by modern standards. Uh, we we're just trying to square the house off because it, uh, it's 19 feet along, that, along the edge, and then you have a. They added a 12 by 12 room onto the yeah, back of it. I was just wondering how that, what you said, addresses the question of why it can't yield a reasonable return. So what did I put down? You said modern housing standards re uh, require a larger amount of square footage. And if that was the criteria for a reasonable return, anybody in Cape Elizabeth with a small house would be entitled to a variance. And that somewhat concerns me. Well, the uh, most of the structure was predated before we even, I mean, you're talking about a house that's over 100 years old. I mean, as far as uh, structure and everything else, uh, I'm sure that we could probably sell it, but it wouldn't be a reasonable return for the property. I probably could make more than what I paid for it, but it would be not 
not what the value of the property is will, will be worth to us. Am I correct in understanding that the garage is, is the uh, rectangle at the left rear of the house? Looking yes. From the road? It comes in next to my daughter's driveway. Other questions? There's 20 feet there. Where is the garage? The left, that the uh, new construction, uh, you know, the gas lines on the left rear of the house, left rear quarter of the house. Yeah, the garage is in the house itself. And so that space is taken up. It's 14, by, it's 14 by 20, the garage, one car. Uh, but there is construction on top of it, a living space yes. construction on top yep. of it. Which is very common. I mean, they use, I've been in the construction business 28 years in drywall, so they do it all the time. Other questions? Go ahead, yeah, the comment was made that you could sell the property and make more money than what you paid for it. But what would that person have to do? Come for a variance. Okay. So you're just passing the buck. You know, it's... Yeah. It would add, uh, as all the neighbors said, it would add to it. It's not an outrageous structure. Uh, it's going from like 1,409 square feet up to uh, 2,000. So I'm adding about six or 700 square feet just by squaring off the corners. One corner is four by 12 back, square that off, and then the garage, 12 by 15, and just go up. And as I said, I talked to Bruce, and uh, if I go by the same foundation, I can go up 35 feet. And then it looks, you know, it's just, it's dysfunctional. It's not, it would be rental property rather than a house, and we'd, we'd like to live there. Any other questions uh, from board members? I hate this, to do this to you, Mr. Aubrey, but I, I'm trying to understand. I mean, we've just been through an hour and 20 minutes worth of discussion about something that I'm having a hard time understanding how yours is different, except that nobody's complaining about water views uh, being obstructed. Uh, but in terms of, in effect, adding on to an existing property that creates uh, further nonconformance. Uh, I I don't see how the board can be. Well, you tell me if you think it's different. I'm not sure I understand because you did hear all our discussion and. Oh, I I, I do, but I I think it's a different situation than I looked into it. But uh, I think the the other situations, some of them, uh, were entirely different. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into, you know, you mean the pe people previous to me? Yeah, well, two times back, uh, yeah. the, the place up on Two Lights Road. Well, that's where my wife was born, on the one that they're going to move it back. That's not the same one. Not the same one. That's the one oh. up here on... Uh, First one, two acres. Yeah. But from the standpoint of the ordinance and the way the board was talking about the dilemma that that particular application presented us, I'm trying to figure out how this one's different, and I can't, so I'm looking for help from you if you have thought about it in that regard. <clears throat> Maybe I'm missing something. I don't understand. Yeah. In the, in the, I ask okay. a question, Mr. Right. Go ahead, Jack. Um, does the new structure increase the nonconformity of the structure on the lot at all, or is it? No, it lessens it, uh, except for one. You mean as far as the, uh, so so the as far area? As the amount that the new structure would um, encroach on the setback requirements. Uh, the only one, the front would go from 8 feet uh, back to 10 feet. 10 feet so right. pick up 2 feet there. Right. On the side, it's 22. Right. And if we turn at the foot, it goes to 23.5 right. something, I think. Right. And then on the back, it goes from 15 to 16 away. And then on my daughter's side, she would lose a foot. Well, that, perhaps that's the difference between this one and the prior one. Mm -hmm. Good point. I mean, actually, we're moving away from three sides. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that would lose the, uh, the, the, the one foot. And w the structure there now is 20 feet. and. Uh, we're going up, like, say, 20, you know, another seven feet, which is right. a normal, uh, Joe would know, a six, six, 12 pitch roof. I mean, it's, it's not very high. 
but I could go up, what, if I just built on the same foundation, Bruce, is it 35 feet to the middle of the upstairs window? As long as the... As long as I don't increase the square footage. The on the second floor is, or the first floor is not increased. Right. So as far as view for the, for the neighbor behind, there's only one neighbor. I mean, that would, that would be another eight feet on top of the 27, so that's... And, uh, I'm sorry, would you clarify, how does the height of a proposed structure compare with the existing structure? How would it, what? How does the height of the proposed structure compare with the existing structure? Seven feet. Seven. Existing one now, I can, the ceiling's here on me, and it's uh, 20 feet to the peak. Okay. This will be 27 feet to the this peak. Would be, this would be a normal, normal roof, okay. normal house. And then he went on to say that if you were limited to the current footprint mm -hmm. to get the same square footage, you have to go up to 35. Right. Well, I mean, to, to do anything with it. Good. Right. But uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you, sir. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this application, either for or against? Okay. Um, you wouldn't dare speak against, would you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, the hearing will be closed then and uh, we'll open this for discussion on the part of the board. Yeah, I don't know what this is more like, the, the first case or more like the Mitchell Road case where they want to go up on the, on the existing footprint. It, it's got elements of both here. We hate, see both an expansion, but a modest expansion. We see a relatively unattractive house which we made a lot more attractive. Uh, still, here is a substantial, it's sort of in the same footprint, but not really. But the additional encroachment, if any, is almost negligible. Yeah. I don't believe there's any in further encroachment as far as closer to property lines, but That's there what is I said, expansions, if, if any, yeah. uh, which increases the non-conformance mm -hmm. as far as square footage goes. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought Mr. Aubrey said that on the, uh, on his daughter's side, he put it on the left side of the house, that there would be, you said a foot, yeah, a foot. One, one uh, foot. Closer? Closer. That's on the right-hand side. It doesn't look at by your drawing, but. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I see it. It's farther away or closer? In other words, on the left front of the house. Any other discussion? Uh, do we have a septic system here, or is it sewer? $10,000. A four-chamber system. Do we have the location of that on, on here? Uh, I have the front one. I think I get you up. Let's see. Let's see. I don't have a problem with the back or the sides. I do have a problem with the front. It seems to me a uh, substantially going. How much further out are you going out from the existing house to the proposed house? To the road? No, from how much are you increasing? Okay, it's close on the road. Where, where is the closest point of the house, not including the deck now? It was eight feet to the deck and it's yes, moving further the back. Right, right. He's asking uh, how much was the existing house not including the deck compared to what this is now proposed. How wide is the deck? No, the deck is. The, the, the existing deck now? Yeah, the existing deck. Eight by 19, 158. So, eight. so the house is, is, is 18 feet back from the road now, not counting the deck. 
and you want to build out to 10 feet back from the road of the house. No, 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 no. Okay. no it's reversed. The existing deck is where it is right now, on the front. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm not counting the deck. Let's talk about the house. Forget the deck for the minute. How house far back would the house be? The wall of the house starts 18 feet back from the road, according to this, as I understand it. Uh, well, if your deck is 8 feet wide and the corner of the deck is 10 feet from the road, then it would follow that the house is 18 feet back from the road. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And you want to build a house out 10 feet to the road? No. No. I don't see this yellow line. The existing house is at 16 feet with the deck, it's eight feet. The proposed house to the deck is gonna be 10 feet and to the front property line is gonna be approximately 13 feet. <clears throat> the nonconformity is gonna decrease, that the bottom line is the nonconformity is gonna decrease by two feet on the front, no matter how you look at it. Considering the deck. Well, that's part of the footprint. It's part of the structure. Right. No, that wasn't part of the structure. Okay. Okay, we're done with the questions? Um, no, I, I just want a clarification. All right. Uh, it looks like uh, the Maine Department of Transportation took some land from this property back a few years ago. Is that? 1962. 1962. They didn't take any of Okay. All right. All right. Let's uh, look for a motion then and see what we see where we're heading. I hope next time you'll have the air conditioning turned on. What? <laughs> yeah. Open the window. That's your head. couple of fans. <laughs> <clears throat> Is there someone who's prepared to make a motion? be denied and do you want to give some reasons for that too? Uh, failure to show uh, that the land in question cannot yield a reasonable rate of return unless a variance is granted okay. is there a second to that motion second it's a motion in a second uh, that the uh, application of the Aubrey's be denied on the grounds that Criteria number one, the landing question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted is not fulfilled. Is there a discussion on that motion? Uh, I'm sympathetic uh, uh, to the application, as I say, in all respects except the front, frontage. I think we traditionally have allowed people to go up in the, in the footprint. I, I don't consider the deck part of the house. and. So I would support the motion as stated, given this application. I would be inclined to approve a variance if the, uh, the front of the house were no, no closer to the road than it is now. Uh, just so we're clear, not that I want to get in argumentative with your comment, but I was under the impression that the house is no closer to the road. It's, it's, Keep on looking. The, the okay. deck is. It's the deck that seems to be the problem. Or, or well, if you just deal with the house. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It looks like. Well, in fact, both the house and deck are further from the road than the current. Uh, well, okay. Correct me wrong, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. The yellow line is the new front of the house. The black line is the old front of the house. No, the the yellow line is meant to highlight, as I understand it, the proposed. heavy black line there, and that's the proposed deck. The new. Okay, house so, line so that's not going to be the house line. No. 
Okay. I'm that's, sorry. A, that's the new. That's where I'm confused. Yeah. Okay. So that L-shaped figure that is all going to be right at the uh, arrow point there, at 10 okay. feet. Okay. That's the corner uh, turning line of the deck, and under the new proposal. Okay. All and right. that Thank faint you. line that goes on straight out from it is the old deck, which is two feet closer to the road. And the house line is the darker black line back where it says 12.2 and 5.7, et cetera. So now understanding that, does that, yeah. Thank you very much. Does that open that, you that, to some, that saying something different? That helps. And I think that we consistently have allowed people to go up in pretty much the same footprint. And if, if my, my fears have been allayed here, and for that reason, I, I would be opposed to the motion as stated. Um, it's, it's a matter of treating people according to the same rules. Someone else want to uh, comment, or are we ready for a vote? Well, I, I'd just like to state that, that I'd like to see these people get their variance, um, but I I'm, don't know how it's any different um, on the first question than, than the pages application was. Um, and. Uh, didn't sense a great swell of support for their application. And I hope that wasn't just because they, uh, the neighbors hired an attorney and, and claimed that there was a uh, obstruction of views. And in this case, there isn't one because the, the issue to me is, is the exact same. And if there's going to be any consistency, um, you know, I, I, probably the ideal thing would be for them to get their variance um, despite the, the difficulty we would have finding in their favor on the first question. And then the pages get theirs too next week or next month. But uh, I don't see how you can consistently be against that one and for this one. Mr. Chairman, allow me to clarify my position on both. I think in this application, the, the applicant has done his best to stay within the same um, building footprint by moving the house to accommodate his plans. Uh, my feelings on the other one, the previous application this evening, was that they were um, basically overbuilding the lot. They were asking for more than what the lot should be yielding. And there was, uh, I thought, a substantial increase in, in the area and their footprint. And that's why I felt uh, negatively towards their, their application. And I think I indicated that if they came back in, and showed some um, creative usage of the of the land and probably combining uh, the garage uh, uh, and accommodating the septic system in a different location, the garage in a different location, then I would look favorably upon that one. I just thought that the height of that building was uh, was excessive for the building itself. But if they came back in next month with another application that showed a smaller uh, a uh, building footprint, uh, I would look favorably upon it. It had nothing to do with uh, putting the cat uh, before the horse, buying the property, and then coming before us and, and, and pleading ignorance that they didn't know that these requirements existed in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, but I, I, I truly believe that this one looks like he's trying to stay within the same framework as, as what's there. Uh, and I can understand your concern. Uh, let's go back uh, several months when someone in another neighborhood uh, wanted to tear down a building and, and rebuild. And I felt the same way that you did or do at that particular time, that uh, it's going to happen. People are going to be buying these lots and tearing down houses that are functionally obsolete. And the pictures that I've been shown tonight surely indicate that this thing has is, is outlived its usefulness. And that's one of the reasons why I support what's happening. And I truly believe that the individual is trying to, trying to uh, build something that's going to be functional and stay within the confines of, <coughs> of the ordinance. So that's why I'm in favor or, or opposed to your motion and in favor of granting the uh, applicant his, his variance. Any other discussion? I would, I would add that in addition to what Joe said about the prior application, I, I felt the applicant didn't do as good a job as was possible. Mr. Chair, uh, no, I, I'm not I so sure that we could keep continuing discussion on yeah. application that's already. Well, yeah. Uh, I think the problem here, and I probably should have stopped, Joe, but uh, because it's so similar, at least superficially, that 
the issue comes up of comparing it, but I think what Bruce is concerned about, and it's a legitimate concern, is that we're sort of discussing why we voted on that prior one. There's nobody here from the applicant or the other side to hear that discussion, and so okay, it's not really make quite a more fair. positive statement. I think yeah. this applicant has done an excellent job of trying to replace uh, an obsolete structure with a new structure that uh, adheres to the existing footprint as closely as possible and does not increase the encroachment on the uh, property line variance. I'd also like to add that I think that this has a, a positive uh, impact upon the neighbors. Uh, the house that is there now is distinctly unattractive. The proposed house looks distinctly attractive. Uh, and if there's no negative impact upon the neighbors, then I think it's in the interest of the town to have attractive housing uh, without flagrantly throwing, throwing the uh, setback requirements out. I don't think this is flagrantly throwing the setback requirements out. Although I can see Tom's point too. Yeah. Mr. Did you want to comment? Go Mr. Ahead. Chairman, I, I, um, all of these points are really good points. Uh, certainly, the house looks appears to have outlived its usefulness and, and needs to be re replaced or remodeled. Um, but I continue to be troubled by not being able to satisfy the first condition about being able to yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Do you think I haven't been convinced by what I've heard. Do you think that the value of the land is impaired by the houses that exist? I mean, somebody who wanted to buy this land would say, yeah, I really like the land, but that house has got to go. Uh, to tear the house down costs X amount of dollars, so the value of the land is impaired by the existence of a relatively unattractive structure on it, in which case the land can't be It's, it's not clear to me why the house couldn't be um, renovated to be an attractive structure in its current footprint. <clears throat> that was period, right? <laughs> okay. okay. I was waiting for the next sentence. Yeah. Um, all right. I guess I need to express my own views here, and I'm I'm really in a dilemma on this one more than the other one. Uh, that, in the sense that I share Tom's concern that uh, the reasonable return issue is questionable. In addition to which, the other similarity is that the owner bought the land and the house, knowing historically and and currently about it, and uh, uh, in effect walked into this knowing that there had to be something serious done. Uh, on the other hand, I'm also uh, aware of the fact that uh, to have, that probably this house cannot be renovated. So the question would be, do you build a new house on the same footprint and not require a variance of any kind? And the proposal that's before us, as I understand it, uh, with the exception of that one foot difference on the roadside corner, actually reduces the uh, setback uh, impacts. And uh, when I think of building a three-story house that would be 35 feet higher, I think the impact on the neighbors and the community's whole, not to mention the owner of the house, would be worse. Um, so I'm on the horns of a dilemma because I think uh, everything points to the desirability of uh, the proposal before us in terms of the impact on everybody, including the community as a whole, uh, and that the, that the proposed impact is minor. So uh, in terms of setback impacts, uh, so I'm uh, not sure what my hand is going to do when, I, when the time comes to vote here. Uh, so is there any further discussion? I just want to point out that we have allowed modest uh, enhancements to houses in the past, and I think this is relatively a modest enhancement. There's no further discussion. Uh, the motion in front of us is to deny the application, so be careful that you're voting for the right motion. And, uh, and if 
the, if that carries, then it's over. Uh, if it doesn't carry, then we'll, we'll be looking for an alternative motion. Um, okay, all those in favor of the motion to deny the application of the Aubrey's uh, for 37 Barry Beach Road, raise your hand. Those opposed? So now we need an alternative motion. Uh, I move that the application of Loretta and Ronald Aubrey for a variance uh, seeking a front line setback of 40 feet from the required 15 and a left line side, side property line variance of 11 feet 3 inches from the required 30 and a right side property line variance of 6 feet 6 inches from the required 30 feet and the rear property set line variance, uh, rear property line variance of 13 feet 9 inches from the required 30 uh, feet uh, to replace an existing family structure dwelling and be granted on grounds that one, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted, and two, that the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. The granting of variance will not alter the essential character of the locality, and, and four, that the hardship is not a result of action taken by the applicant or, or a prior owner. Second. Now discussion. All those in favor of that motion? Those opposed? Opposed are Ms. Elkin and uh, Mr. LaPrade. And uh, it's quite a struggle. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Thank you. uh, is there any other? There's two other items on the agenda, as I recall. My agenda is now buried somewhere. Uh, the first one, the under communications, and I want to get us out of here because I'm leaving on a 6 o'clock plane in the morning and you're all tired. Uh, is a discussion of a change in the requirement that applicant's site plan be at a minimum a mortgage inspection plan. Uh, we could hold that to a shot of meeting night if you'd like, Henry. I don't, I don't think this is a pressing dilemma, and I personally would be happy to see it tabled again if nobody objects to that. Okay. I don't hear any objections, so we'll put that off. And the second one is a discussion of memo from the planning board, which we don't in fact actually have, but. Uh, Bruce informed me, and I'll just say this very briefly uh, before the meeting, that the planning board, uh, shall we say, has a limited memory of the meeting that we had together in the, in the council room in terms of the details. And so when uh, they were presented with the draft ordinance for discussion that we looked at at our prior meeting, previous meeting, uh, there was some negative reaction or at least doubtful reaction. Did we really say that? So they really apparently, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, I'm just trying to make this short, but I understand that they uh, discussed it at some length and then decided that they would uh, table it and uh, go back and uh, discuss it later, hopefully enlightened by some questions they've asked to see whether there are any alternatives to get at the same objective. So I interpret that to mean that there's some uneasiness on the part of the planning board about changing from the strict standard that we have been suffering with so long and again tonight. So uh, uh, I'm going to be out of time for three weeks, but when I get back, hopefully Bruce will have some updated information for me, and, and I will, if need be and if it's appropriate, and nobody here objects, uh, write a letter to the Planning Board reiterating our concern and perhaps using this situation tonight as an example of the dilemma we find ourselves in all the time and copy the town manager on that and uh, but the planning board under the ordinance has the power to do whatever they want when it comes to recommendations of the council and they're the conduit so we can't do much about it if they decide not to do it well you know there are other, there are other options too that you guys could bring it forth as a board and well, then, then the council would have to end up dumping it on the planning board's lap for the review anyways and mm -hmm. they may or may not support it but yeah. it's better to have uh, you know work with them and have them look this over and hopefully come up with the same, be on the same uh, line. Okay. And it's premature because, um, you know, the last discussion was decided that they, they would, they would look at this further before they made a decision. Mr. Chairman, just one other question that was asked earlier this evening. Is there a, uh, a seventh member being considered at this time? As you know, Mike McGovern has been uh, out of town for several weeks. Uh, Didn't know that. Well, several weeks. He's been out of town. 
there has been a change in the council uh, members and the new committees were just appointed, um, one of them being the, the appointment committee. Uh, so things have been somewhat at a limbo because of the, the change in the council. But I suspect that now that they've got the new committees formed that they will pursue um, filling the vacancy that the board has. Uh, I don't think Mike, at least legally, Mike doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, he no, he doesn't, but I, the reason why I said that is because I haven't been able to confer with him what, where that is, but I assume because of the change in councillors and new committees, that's the reason why there's been no decision. Yeah, I think they still do have applicants from the last round. They were at least oh, I'm sure there are people clamoring to get here for oh. agent money. <laughs> There were at least six applicants in December for the two vacancies. So I think those applicants, applications are still active. They still keep them actively on file for one year. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, folks, for sticking through it here with the heat and everything. About two and a half. That was fun. Ah, you're going to. I did. I'd be here to deal with the fuel uh, thing again, huh? No, I Reason prevails. Come on. Why did you want to take